I paid $75,000 for this luxury RV, and on our first trip, things broke. Two o'clock in the morning, going through the Tennessee mountains, foggy, raining, what happens? Windshield wiper completely breaks off of it. And what you see now, uh, it, it wasn't the passenger side. Yeah, it was the driver's side that broke off. It went wink, wink, kabam, and then flew off and was laying over like this, and we thought we were gonna lose it. Uh, and then we got all the way to Oshkosh. I had to take and flip this one over to there, and then, you know, swap a Rooney so at least we'd have a windshield wiper because it took forever to order the parts. But look at this, it broke the shaft all the way in two. Okay, small potatoes compared to what I discovered on the trip back. Hey, there you go. After an hour and small amount of blood, I was able to get that on. Let's turn it on and see if it works. Now for the part that I didn't want to show you but it needs to be shown because it's kind of a major thing as we were driving down the road the whole thing was going blah, 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 blah. i mean most rvs kind of have a shake to it but this was a bit more than ought to be there i uh, had way more play in the steering wheel than it should have come here and look at this the normal amount of play in one of these is you know kind of like this but listen really really carefully you hear the thunk 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 not good. And look, that's a lot. Now, I had uh, the master of RVs, Steve, out here, which you may remember because he helped fix the old, the free abandoned RV that is now the Elvis jet chassis. Uh, and he was out here the other day. We didn't have the cameras rolling, but let me show you what he found. This thing has a generator tray for the whole thing can slide out. That's handy, isn't it? There you go. So if we look, that, well, you can't really see it in the film. It looks pretty stable. But you can see that it's going up and down. It's not supposed to be going up and down. Those bearings right there are absolutely toast. Then we discovered that this wool bearing has water in it, that's not good. That is milkshakey, which is not good. It needs to be nice, clear, nice, pretty oil, you know, liquid dinosaurs. And right now uh, we move back a couple days in creation. We've got water mixed with dinosaurs and that's never a good thing. We got the bearings ordered. Bearings were kind of normal price things, about 40 bucks a piece, Aha! But the seal on the back, which is where all this water is getting into, yeah, that's uh, RV priced. It was $78 for a little rubber seal about this big. So all this front end work, I bought the parts directly from Rayco, which ironically, Numar only makes the house part of it. And then Spartan makes the chassis part of it, which the Elvis jet, you guys saw that. It was a Freightliner chassis with a, whatever it was, Sportsman's or something like that on top. All these RV manufacturers, they get a chassis from one place, build their stuff on top of it. Well. Aha, uh -huh. when it comes to like luxury coaches like this thing was, is, was, uh, a different company built the front end called Rayco Granning, okay, and it's supposed to be really nice driving experience like a car and all that. Well, right now it's definitely not. But when he ordered all the parts, came up to right at $2,000, yowza. Uh, and then we got to go take it to a shop because this was way too big for even Steve to do in the field. And I surely don't have the, the tools to do this. So we got to take it to a shop. And uh, I'm guesstimating another roughly $2,000 in labor for the alignment and all the stuff that we got to do. So um, love me some RV ownership. So I am super excited because we are getting this RV ready because as you know, we're going across the entire country all the way to Seattle, Washington. And uh, you saw the SR-71 video. And yes, I actually did end up buying multiple aircraft from that museum. That's where I'm headed is to go back there, see which ones of them run. Frankly, I've never even looked at them more than what you saw in the video. So I gotta go check them out. I've already 
I've already bought them. So now we got to, I don't even know what I bought, but it's, yeah, it's going to be fine. And then there's one that is in, near Seattle that I'm hoping, fingers crossed, is going to be a sweet, good deal. Needs saving. And it's going to be a fantastic family traveler because, you know, the 310, while it's pretty stinking awesome, it's a hot rod. I've got five people in my family and it only has five seats. We can't actually use it. And now that we're saving these airplanes, we need to go on trips and like go do some of the epic stuff that you can only get to with airplane or boat. That's what we're going to do. We got some, I mean, you throw in the comments, what are some awesome places that you can only get to by airplane or boat and let's do it. Then maybe we can have like a Jimmy's real world road rules edition or something like that. That'd be kind of fun. Oh, on this road trip that we're going on, we're making several stops. One is to pick up a bunch of uh, Jetstar parts from our favorite junkyard, BAS. They, they actually have two of them, which is pretty awesome. And they said, hey, we got your back. Whatever you need, it's all yours. Because, frankly, there's no more flying, so it's not like they have anything to do with them. But they do have a lot of stuff for it that we need to complete the Elvis jet. We're going to be stopping there. Then I've got a couple of special guests going to be appearing on that road trip. Uh, and we're just going to we'll just see what comes along the way. But, uh, yeah, take a look at that. Yeah, it's a little bit rusty right there. And pretty sure the floor of this thing is rusted out and completely trashed. Uh, so, you know what? It's, it's kind of it's fine. And I bought a little gift for myself and the RV. It's a tire pressure monitoring thing. And apparently you just got to put little caps on it and that's, that's it. With no help from the instructions whatsoever, we got them synced up. This one is number one on that side. Then, then that's it. It's showing uh, 99 PSI and it's 90 degrees outside. That's pretty good. Hey. Are you ready to do a trip? Are you ready to do a trip? <laughs> <laughs> that's the real uh, question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think we're doing a thing. Yeah, we're, we're, we're doing a thing. Yeah, we gotta hook this van up to the back of this thing. I did the math. From that top to the, to the back of that is 66 feet and we're over 54,000 pounds. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Beast here gets about 6.2 miles per gallon. Well, the first thing they told me was yesterday, the generator would turn on and then turn off. Okay. So far it seems to be working. AC's on. That's We got it under control. I know how to brew coffee and it's for you, so don't complain. Okay, that's gonna be deleted and off of there. <laughs> Yay, let the journey begin! Woo! Woo! Uh, the other thing that we discovered is that we put some stuff under the bed. Well, apparently the bottom part of the bed down there doesn't move and this up here does move. So we're going to see if we destroyed and crushed some things. Yeah, go ahead and open her up, buddy. Bailey, can you get on this side and help him lift it up? The whole thing, the board underneath and everything. Okay. Fine. I didn't do anything. Yay. Yay. Oh. Oh no, it came. That was a generator just killed. Oh no. Well, great. Yay, adventures. Well, uh, status update. We didn't crush everything under the bed. However, the generator decided to go put as we're pulling out on a roughly 8,000 mile trip. So that's... That's fine. It's gonna be fine. I don't know what the problem was. Didn't have coffee. This fixes everything. Say a prayer for me. 
I'm going to try to connect it there and not... That's part of the trip now. And not take out that trailer or the boat next to me when I turn, so... Here goes the first of many times when I question my thought process. Noah, are you ready? Ready. All right, Silas, you ready? Definitely. Bentley, you ready? Yeah. All right. Hey, babe, you ready? Yeah. She's all loaded up. Yeah, the generator totally took a crap on us as we we're pulling out. That's expected. Uh, the van, sure, fine. Bikes, you know, the family thing. And now we have to take the obligatory family photo before we leave. So, reset. Okay, here we go. All right, one broken generator, one backup camera that's not turning on, half tank of fuel. Oh, by the way, left uh, the wife and the youngest here. They're gonna fly and just meet us in Denver because they're smart. Now we hold up traffic for the next eight days. RV life. Oh, but I did uh, got front end work. See, it's all nice and tight now. Twenty five hundred bucks is. That way, actually, it was more than that. A thousand forty two for the labor and something. It was two thousand, so three thousand bucks to get the front end kind of sort of figured out. And of course, the shocks are a special weird shock on it that needs some sort of adapter bracket, which I have to order that takes roughly four to six weeks to get in. Uh, so you know, we're just we're just gonna send it, and I figure we'll just figure it out on the way. And, uh, we're gonna try the generator. We looked up the codes, and it was a service code. That's all it said. It wouldn't say anything else. So you know. What? See if this works. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Oh shoot, it turned off. One. 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 Three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Two, three. Great. Ever since we bought the Elvis jet, this guy right here can't get enough of these peanut butter and banana sandwiches. They're good. What? Yeah. And he has what to make it somewhere where I'm trying to get it. I think what happened is that the water pump belt broke because I remember yesterday we had it running for like eight hours straight and I had a hint of burning rubber and I was curious what it was and according to this that makes sense if it if that would have broke so let's go out and take a look at it no idea that is a gas station have you ever seen a gas station that big? that is really big it's ridiculous. That's there's, a gas station? <laughs> yeah. There's something like two. Oh, number 210. That's insane. All right, well, let's go put $500 on 210. Lovely. Oh, and it's got air conditioning. Oh, that's nice. Look at the size of this place. This thing is huge. Hold the phone. Is that bacon wrapped pork tenderloin? <gasps> Silas, they had 250 stalls in the bathroom. Wow, that's a hundred bucks. Check out what Silas just found. Show him the secret hiding spot. <laughs> Ta-da! What are we gonna do? We're putting a note in there that says, "Save it 310 your name." So if you come here, it's at pump number 226 at the Bucky's, just south of Ma Macon, I think. We're gonna put that in there. Sign your name. And uh, you know, tag us at hashtag save the 310 when you're here. All right, go ahead and put it up. That'll be our secret. <laughs> nice. You can't even tell, you just walk by. Wow. Yeah. 
Yep. We're at our overnight stop here at Cabela's. That's fantastic. The management said that we could stay here. The van is inside the line. Oh, sorry. And it is 9 o'clock. Now I get to go work on the generator. <laughs> <gasps> 10 hours of driving, 500 miles, 9 o'clock at night, and uh, now it's cooled off a little bit. Let's see what in the world, if that belt is actually broken or if it's something else. It is nice that this thing is on a roller. First, roll out the black carpet. There's the pulley missing a belt. Okay. Note to self, we the belt is broken. So now we just gotta go get a belt and then take like all of this apart to change it. We're moving on to Chattanooga. It's too flipping hot. We're just gonna go park outside the Cummins dealer that has the belt that we need and uh, just press on Mountain Dew water. What do you say, kid? Yay! It's gonna be so fun! <laughs> Adventures! Yay! Captain's log is now 5.09 a.m. And the guy knocked on our thing, told us we had to move. Because apparently we're not allowed to rest at the rest area. Which is the first for me. I've never been told that we can't park at the rest area. Now I will admit we're in the regular car place because all the semi truck place was full and we're taking up like 20 spaces but you know besides that I don't understand it. I mean you know I don't I don't get it taking up so much space. <laughs> I'm not sure which way to go. That's the building but I don't know if I go that way. If I go that way, probably don't want to go this way. That doesn't seem like a good place to go. As I go for a walk this morning, I'd like to share with you an email that I received from one of you. Uh, his name is Mike. I'll leave it at that. He just says, I would like to thank you for the content. Basically, it saved my life two years ago. I had a heart attack, bypass surgery, and a stroke all within six days. Whew. I was on the verge of checking out permanently and watching your content sure has helped me out. Thank you so much. Mike, it is my heart's pleasure to know that my silly antics and these crazy adventures can bring a smile to your face because that's what I do it for, honestly. All these fun things, this is to live a life well lived and you know, at the end of it all, to have a story that would make um, that would make a good story someday. Mike, thank you so much. And I do see and read all the emails. I'm not able to get to them all, but I do read them all, and I really do appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. I think we found our way in. There's somebody in there taking stuff out, which I'm sure that's normal when nobody else is around. But he seems like a a fine upstanding young man. This whole trip Adam might have to be canceled and we might have to fly home. Coffee maker is deciding just to buzz and not actually work. my drill at home and I can just whoop, 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 whoop out of all these but there's the water pump there's the crank pulley that little tiny belt yay and there's no adjustment on it okay so I guess we gotta pull that pulley off put the belt on and then pull put the pulley back on a lovely sunrise here Check. in Chattanooga, Tennessee. 
getting the old RV squared away with our busted belt. That's neat. Broken. Bright and early, 7.30 in the morning when they open. $17.84. Looks to be the right belt. Let's find out. Now the real trick becomes doing this while holding a camera. Woo, boys and girls, I believe we're in business. Hey oh Silas looking good, man. Yay. You got pretty dirty, man. Well, will it last? Yeah. That's the that's the trick. Fill the AC's on, but the real question is the coffee pot. <gasps> oh, praise the Lord! Is it working? I don't know. Wait. Uh. Glory, glory, hallelujah! Glory, glory, hallelujah! It's gonna be a great day! I've got coffee! coffee, coffee. Yes! Twelve seconds later. There's a fortune in here! And he is mad! It came out of the drain! Uh, How did it scorpion get in the drain of this thing? Oh yeah, it's just mad. I mean a scorpion bowl. Scorpion bowl! I'm touching him through the bowl. Well that's a first for me. I've never had a scorpion join me in the shower. Ew. No, they, they're like, wow, look at them all. <laughs> I don't get why he's afraid. local time and uh, 1164 miles 23.0 hours and the generator I'm glad to say is still working like a champ and it's nice and chilly and the ACs are going hallelujah the rest of the day went well yeah I can't wait for tomorrow because I'm super excited to get out there That's what it was like sleeping with him in the same bed. All right, where are you? There should be an airport over here somewhere. Ah, there's a Learjet. There's a, oh, look at all the tails. Dude, you got everything over here. What is that big old red thing? Dude, what is that? We're gonna go in and meet Matt, and I think we're gonna be able to check out a bunch of stuff. And we have three very, very special planes that I know are here, and they have a very special place in the Jimmy's World world. Good, look for Matt. Matt. Jimmy, Matt, Matt Jimmy, I'm Juan. Juan, good to meet you. Oh. You are supposed to be here with uh... With Clint tomorrow. Clint? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've been uh, expecting you. Well, I told that we I'd were be not, here. We were not expecting such a beautiful mobile home. Yeah, well, Thank you. Merry Christmas to me. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Merry Christmas. We'll trade you for something. Okay. So. White Industries was started uh, back in about the 1960s. Terry White uh, came up with the idea. He was in a foreign car auto salvage business and uh, got into aviation as well and looking around and not seeing a lot of people parting out aircrafts. So being that he was already doing it with automobiles, he decided to start buying airplanes and dismantling them for parts. 
So Terry bought this property out here about 1979-1980 and uh, built a runway, 4,000 foot long runway. Oh, he uh, built the runway. Built a runway, built, got the property. Uh, ironically, nobody was using the name Harry S. Truman for an airport. He, Seriously? He put that out there with the <laughs> FAA <laughs> and was able to get the Harry S. Truman name for the airport here. So we are Harry S. Truman Regional Airport. But yeah, uh, really we got about 1,800 total airplanes over the years we dismantled. Yeah. Uh, everything from single engine, Cessna 120, Grumman's, uh, Piper, right. Colts, Big all jets. the way up through the Jets, the Havilland Dash 7s, Jetstream 31s, Falcons, Hawkers, uh, all kinds yeah. of general aviation aircraft over the years that we parted out. This, it's the spruce goose, the it spruce is, duck. It is a duck of aviation here. Fly, plywood. So, so this was a helicopter or a gyrocopter? A little helicopter that he built. Did he ever actually fly it? Did they get it off the ground? My understanding is it was really squirrely. <laughs> yeah, And I they bet. decided to uh, put it back down and parked it in a barn. And uh, we ended up, they brought it to us one day on a trailer and said, uh, hey, would you be interested in this? And then you got this right here, thrust reverser. You got some thrust reversers. Chrome. Uh, come off of or not uh, chrome, but polish. Citation, yep. Because you can't chrome things. Yeah, don't get me started on that. Yeah, whole... yeah. The last, a lot of nice polished aluminum. So this is actually a jump seat came out of a aircraft that was a military concept training aircraft called a Peregrin. It was in flight development, a side-by-side -side cockpit. So he lost control of the aircraft due to the flutter and ended up ejecting from the aircraft. And Was he okay? He don't know. I can't say. I don't know. remember this full story on that. You have to look it up. But uh, this seat was, nobody was inside the seat. It's exactly. this cylinder right here, right? Yep, yep. Got and a little compressed, goes, compressed gas cylinder there that as soon as you let it off, it ejects the air, uh, whole seat assembly out of the aircraft. Gosh. I'm trying to recount how many times be you guys, BAS, has saved our tail. The first time was with the Luscombe. Okay. Out in Texas, yep. the uh, little gas glader thing. Yep. I think Clint helped you out on that one. He did, he and did. I was shocked because it was only forty-three bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never seen an airplane part that cheap. And then the next one was the spinner on the Blue Tarp Special. Yes. That exploded because it was made out of fiberglass and didn't put all the screws in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll just leave that one there. There was something else though. I thought bef between. That. What was it? Uh, we had a couple other pieces for uh, the blue, t blue tarp special as well. Um, uh, some bracketry that we got for you on that. They're saving the bacon on the 310 this time around because we found during its annual some cracked exhaust pieces and they had those and yep. I think there was some other thing. But then the biggest and the best thing we'll show you here in just a little bit. It's going to be fantastic. That's pretty cool. What do we got behind door number one? Wow. Look at the size of the jet engines over there. Are all three, wait, were there three engines on the same airplane? No, there are four, there's two engines on each airplane. Uh, I actually have two Gulfstream G2s here. These are three of the engines I have left. The fourth engine I actually sold, and it actually was uh, sent over to uh, China and was being used for a, a school purpose. Oh, okay, I was going to say, other purposes. than a school, what yeah. in the world no, that, would you that's do That's the main purpose like of these that. engines. They'll be used for a school purpose. Then I noticed over here, little tiny engines. I think those might have even came off of a Jetstar. That's what I was thinking. The 731s were the model after mine. Yep. Because yep. my model with the four little ones was the mm -hmm. noise, the first noise violation thing that they couldn't do anything with. Correct. And then they went to these engines, which were the 731s, and then these engines got outdone by a noise thing not too long ago, right? Correct. Now, they do make hush kits for these, I think. They do. Except they're like literally a million bucks, which is nuts when the whole airplane can be bought for 300 grand. Yep. So we, you got to weigh the options, yeah, value just versus ridiculous. love yeah. of the airplane. So unfortunately, government came to the rescue again. We'll just move on from that conversation. Now we were talking about some exhaust that you were needing for your Cessna 310. Yes, sir. I do have a couple pieces sitting right here. 
Ah, I will. Oh, I thought you were pointing to these. No, well, you could use these. <laughs> This would be a nice mod to your 310 here. Yeah, this but is. But here are a couple of exhaust pieces for the yeah, Cessna let's see 310. Let's get some light over here. Yeah, that's it. Because these are all slip joints. Had issues with it. Mine, the whole tab broke off and wore through there. And then I think it did the same thing on this side. Even though it's been that way for 20 years, mm -hmm. probably safest to make sure the exhaust is totally sealed sure. inside that engine bay where all the fuel and oil Fueling no oil just, and heat and everything's coming out know. of it. Yeah. Wheels and brakes, bent propellers, bent propellers. No. And what's, what's amazing is, yes, it looks like there's chaos everywhere here, but majority of the parts in this building actually are booked into our computer system and our inventory. So we do have a good idea of what is here, where we can go and find the parts and all when we need to. Man, why? That is just amazing. Building three. Building three. So this building mainly housed a uh, piston turbine, or piston turbine, excuse me. This building mainly housed our uh, twin engine piston parts and some of our uh, uh, twin engine turbine aircraft that we bought over the years. Holy crap, you're not kidding, it's warm in here. It is toasty in this building. So we're gonna make this one a quicker one. Got a bicycle in here, cause uh, you know, you never know. Never know we needed transportation. So. And then it goes as far as the eye can see that way. Good night, that's a bunch of stuff in there. All right, now this one is single engine stuff, right? Single engine piston parts with a few little mix in of with turbine. A, with a couple of turbines. Couple of turbines. In. That is just insane. Here, stand there. I'm still going! <laughs> this is only halfway! Cowlings, that one's gonna need a little Needs, needs little a little buff. repair, a little fiberglass yeah, work, little buff fix it up. Wow! Now those are some VGs. I have never seen VGs this big on a wing that's that thick. What did that come that off That came of? off of a Saab 340. A Saab 340. The Saab. So that was a commuter, yeah, a commuter aircraft. That's actually the, uh, I think that's a rudder that came off the aircraft. Oh, so that's a pretty good size airplane. Yes. What the heck is that? That is a baggage pod come off of a Jetstream 31. What? So because they don't have room to put, me they don't have room to put the baggage and everything inside the aircraft, that's a little pod they put on the belly that they can then open up the door on. And store that's pretty store cool baggage and all underneath the aircraft. Oh, and you got a little yellow something or not? A little swift. And the console TV. Got a beauty. Come on, do you remember? And you, it's scary that I knew <laughs> exactly where to open this panel up because I think we had one as I was a kid, and I used to lay there on Saturday mornings and use my toe <laughs> to change the channel up and down. That's awesome. Oh, oh man. Okay, pretty cool. It's hot cool. in here. Holy crap. Feel the air conditioning as we come outside. Ah, uh, to a lovely cool Little 90 degrees. 90, 90 degrees five. breeze as we come outside. Oh, wow. So as we as we transition out to our yard, you'll see I got airplanes in bushes everywhere. <laughs> it's just not Whoa, what is that thing back there? That is the nose section of a uh, Beach 1900D. Oh, that one looks like it got a little warm and toasty. Yeah, that's uh, part of the 1900. Oh, that's the that airplane. That's part of the wing section, yeah. Oh, wow. Is there any still complete airplanes out here? There are a few flying aircraft that we do have in a building across the way. Uh, but, and they are for sale. Uh, as a flying aircraft, but I don't have any project airplanes right now. The uh, fuselage is kind of overgrown with trees and all, but this is actually ah. the Peregrine aircraft right here that was uh, where the ejection seat came from. So it came out of that front windshield? It busted out through the top, actually. There's a section just behind that windshield oh, divider there. Yeah. That's You can see where it all blew off the canopy and everything blew off the top of the aircraft. Man. And these are ag planes? These here? are ag aircraft here. Cessna 188s, uh, ag wagons, ag trucks, uh, Eagle spray plane. Yeah. Yep, watch your step. 
Another little neat airplane I'll show you over here. Yeah, she warm. <laughs> and I know day. I know we won't do too much outside, but this since we're in this area, a De Havilland Dove. The heck is that? You got a really sharp pointed nose. Here, get underneath. A little kind of uh, business uh, twin engine turboprop aircraft. You were just right here somewhere, right? Yes, uh, up just a little bit right I guess there. Was right in right here there somewhere. is where we were. Those are all airplanes. Yep. Holy moly! Those are all the airplanes on the property. Our 1800 airplanes. It is 102 outside right now, which I think is being kind because it's it's beyond hot outside. We just said the heck with it. And I'm staying inside the RV and the air conditioners. Both of them are going and they're barely keeping up and I'm showing it's still 80 degrees inside here, which is a lot better than 102 outside. I think our pizza got a little frostbite. Oh, if that thing poops or pees right there. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day, for this food, for this travel, and this crazy adventure, and even for burnt frost, burnt pizza. We give you thanks and praise in all things, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Tasty. Here's something off. <laughs> Best Buy December of 2022. That was like a year ago. <laughs> I wonder why it tastes a little funky. <laughs> you know what I do have? My barbecue sandwich from Bucky's. Hey ho ho! <coughs> Alright, All right, boys, here's our treasure map. This is a poster of the cockpit to Elvis's jet, the Lockheed Jetstar from cockpitposters.co.uk. Check them out, it's pretty neat. They sent this to us because we need to figure out which things were missing off of this poster. It's pretty much all of this right here. So we have some attitude, we got a DG, radar, and whatever all that stuff is. My understanding is you you guys have a couple of jet stars out here. Got a couple of fuselages laying out. Cu here. Couple of them. How many jet stars do you guys have? I have twelve total jet stars in our. <laughs> That's ridiculous. So. Twelve. I did a little bit of research. Elvis's jet star is serial number five zero one six, or no five zero one five, no five zero one six. They have five zero one three, so only three off. They also have five zero. Zero one, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. Very, very cool airplane. Um, this is our goal. Let's, let's do it. Yeah, let's go. We'll take this with us so we can try to figure out, you know, what we're looking for, what we need. That's good. Yeah, that is super neat. This is the first of three jet stars. These are very well picked over. So what's left of this? That's the Muhammad Ali that he flew onto Manila. Correct. That's pretty cool. Couldn't be any worse than showering with a scorpion. <laughs> Probably not. Oh, Okay, so we know that the Elvis jet star nacelles are sitting in the museum in, uh, uh, where is that, Tennessee. Tennessee. Now here's a fun story. The previous owner, they showed a bill of sale where the airplane was sold to the next guy that owned it like two people before me, and now that guy died, and then those people are trying to get me to buy those nacelles, and they won't give me a price. Ah, so I, I keep telling them, I'm like, look, I got no use for those <laughs> nacelles whatsoever, and the museum is trying to get rid of them because they're so massive. I didn't realize they are huge. That is, that's like six feet from that side to that side over there. As far as the eye can see, you know, amazingness. This is so far the best condition Jet Star. It still has the windshield wiper things on it. I thought I heard bees. That we may, that we may need. Boy, if you don't like spiders, this is not the place to be. That is one gigantic, the whole thing is a spider web. Now what the heck, like, how would you? So there's a, Jimmy, there's a wheel down there on the bottom. All right, let's try to 
This one's in really good condition because I need all of these bars on both sides because all mine, these things are all broken. This thing is broken on mine. I'm missing some of these bars are broken. Caffeine free Diet Pepsi. Now, it'd be cool if you found like a Pepsi Clear. Yeah. <laughs> a Coke One or New Coke, is that what it's called? Oh. Come on, how cool is that? Have a phone in your airplane? Okay, so immediately after we get done here, we're going straight to the hospital for tetanus, rabies, and whatever other shots they have for critters. It's got golden brass stuff in it, and it's got the right doors. Shut the front door. Because you have, there's a button right here on the inside. Dude, this, this thing is nice. This was a very nice one. Oh my Whoa. goodness. Here they are. The golden chalice. Right there. That's that's the ones that were taken out of mine. Oh, glory, glory, hallelujah. <coughs> There's something in there. What is that? Yeah. Oh, hey, uh, Was, you got your hat? Can you, oh, oh. Can you take them out? There's only one on there. Oh, you made him mad! <laughs> Give me your hat! What are you doing? Give me your stinking hat! Here you go. Incoming! Where'd he go? Go get him. Crikey, mate! Ah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, oh come a on! It's a phone! Oh, wow. <laughs> look at that. Come on. It's, it's, what's your guess what year? I mean, this has got like 1998 was, all over I was going to call 97. That was, yeah. That's where I was headed. Nice. Okay, I lied. I want the stairs out of this one. Because this one, I'll, it'll make sure that it fits. I track it all for you. Oh, these are going to pinch. This one does not smell lovely. Let's go. Oh, there's a... See, this is the one that had the wasps in no infestation. Case. This one was fun to go in. This one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. How cool is that? It's a mystic paint airplane that changes color purple to copper to whatever that's a little... man it's not even warm in here anymore I'm pretty sure this is the one you're looking for is this it yep all right it's getting serious he said this one was super nice is it really nice in there dude <laughs> It's, yeah, it still has the throw pillows and stuff. This airplane behind me was owned by Elvis Presley Corporation. Ah, not Elvis Presley personally. It was used for the cooks and bands and other things as part of his, you know, corporation. And this one, I think, is the one that I've received lots of comments about to say, hey, Jimmy, your jet is not the only one that's out there that Elvis Presley owned. Well, personally, yes, because this one was owned by the Elvis Presley Corporation. Oh, weird. There you go. Some water. No coffee? No coffee. This is in great shape. Yeah, it is. The seal is kind of soft. This airplane right here I am super excited about because right here... This 
is where the engine from the silver bullet came from this airplane right here on this spot and now it's been flying me and silas for over a year year and a half now and it came off of here i think the logbook said somewhere around 99 2000 2001 something like that uh, and it was rebuilt get this in 1979 <laughs> and it's still flying it's a, i i wish kind of i wouldn't have learned that as i was reviewing the logbooks for its annual because now i'm like holy crap that engine rebuild is 40 years old and but it's only got like 600 hours on it and it flies perfect this airplane is life's problem you want apparently it was a celebrity of some sort we'll need your research look up the tail number we'll find that in a second and figure out which celebrity that owned this and the story is they got it and they said it wasn't big enough so let's just find out what's not nice or big enough for a celebrity because that's the type of problem i would love to have the leg room right here is less than desirable this is Southwest leg room right here. <laughs> I'm probably never going to get sponsored by Southwest. That's all right. Dude, this... This is a nice little airplane. It has a really small coffee pot, though. Yeah, yo, yeah, that's why, right there. That is why. Cup thing. What celebrity uh, owned this thing? Charlie Golf Sierra Quebec. Echo from Canada, eh? Hey. Does it still have the engines in it? It does. Ooh. Spinny, spinny. Perfect. Our first casualty. <laughs> Apparently, uh, he just got stung by a bee swatting it off of his leg. <laughs> he stung on the leg, too. Like, Did it sting you on the leg, too? I don't know, but it hurts, though, too. I'm told that uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken Colonel Sanders airplane is in here somewhere. Sanders, can you see that? Zoom in. Yeah, we can see most of it. Colonel Sanders. You guys, let's do Kentucky Fried Chicken for lunch. The circle of life for an airplane. This is where they go when all of the usable parts have been taken off of them. And then from here, they'll go into a grinder and made into blocks of special aluminum. And no, we can't use this aluminum for like pop cans and beer cans because it's a weird aerospace aluminum. So it's kind of useless aluminum when it's not used in aerospace. So that's kind of where you're stuck. But uh, you know, you get a big mountain of airplanes and you crush it, cube it, and then send it somewhere to create something. So this is Matt, he's the guy in charge of the Missouri location where we're at now. This is Clint who is out at the uh, Greeley location in Colorado. That is our, not our next stop as part of the video, but I will see you in a few days right. on Tuesday. And today is, what is today? Friday. Today is Friday. Today is Friday, so I'll see you on Tuesday. We've got a few more stops on our way to Colorado, so that's going to be fantastic. Uh, well, with that said, Gentlemen, I'm gonna get you got the list of Jetstar parts that we I need. Do. I do. So he's gonna get busy taking stairs and lights and instruments. And even though we didn't find them in the airplanes, he was telling me that they put them up. They take all the good instruments out, put them in their inventory stuff, and we'll dig through and make sure we find those. I'm sure there was a bunch more parts and stuff. You guys have saved my tail so many times. This the first of many times. Matt, appreciate Pleasure. it, Clint. Pleasure. I'll see you in a few days, man. Yes, sir. All right, well, let's hit the road. So the whole reason we're doing this is we're trying to find a path out for the RV because I pulled in too far, and now I'm not sure if I'll be able to get out of here. Bye, VAS Junkyard. That was awesome. Totally, totally super cool. Glad we stopped. Now, Oh man, we've got a lot more stops. We got like three stops just today. Wow. Oh, oh. oh. It's yellow. Oh, that stinks. It does? It's oh, on me. that's bad. 
Oh, there's still more. Why? What? Bentley, I want you to come over here and keep your foot on this. <laughs> yes, you gotta put your foot on it to hold it there so the hose doesn't go boom. Oh, gross. <laughs> now that's disgusting. It does smell like a cow pasture. It does. Yeah, do like that. There you go. Yes. It is definitely on my hands. That's so gross. Nice. All right, ready? Okay. Are you ready? No. Yes. Do it. Fire one. Oh, it's brown. Ew. Oh, that's gross. I don't want Subway anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's chunks. Oh, it's starting to get less. Woo! Turn it that way? No, Yeah, on. that way. Keep going. That's all your shower drain and yeah. sink drain and stuff like that. And it's clogged up there. It's empty again. Great. Yes. Oh, come on. That's not good. You have to stick your hand up there. Oh, there it goes. Oh, wow. That is disgusting. And that's supposed to be the gray water tank. Yeah, this is all the calcium buildup. Look at that. That's a lot. I don't want to look at it. Yeah. Hey. There he is. Jimmy. How's it going, buddy? Good. Danny? Awesome, yes. Is that right? Yep. Yep, awesome. Danny. And I couldn't help but notice the, uh, the iguana. Yeah, on. come out. Come look at Oh, TCB, baby. He's got some uh, taking care of business. Glasses on his monkey. Come up here and check this out. Yeah. There's a, there's a Danny here with RJ Iguanas, number 23. I'm going to just plug his business as much as possible because he went above and beyond. This is serial number 23. He's going to get... There you, that's yours. Awesome. So he's gonna, he wanted RJ Iguana's number 23. I think that was the whole thing that we were able to fit on the plaque that's gonna go on the Elvis jet. Uh, this is a certificate of authenticity, the bill of sale showing Elvis bought it. Great. All that's yours, this is your frame thing. For his 5,000 donation to Wings of Compassion so we can keep, you know, keep aviation stuff going through veterans and other organizations. Absolutely. So that, that's for him and it's 100% tax deductible. So other businesses out there, it's, he's getting more than this in advertising right now, so yeah, I appreciate pers that. And personally delivered. And Thanks personally, I can't promise we're personally delivering to all of them. <laughs> uh, but this happened to be right on our way to our next stop, uh, just south of Kansas City, so it worked out perfect. Oh yeah, there you go! Alright, so we haven't tried this uh, try RJ Iguana's number 23. Alright, buddy. Got a little bit right there. Here you go. I got one. Cheers. Here you go. <laughs> Dude, that tastes That's like good, but it, it's almost like barbecue sauce. Mm -hmm. That's actually really good. Wow, that's yeah. really good. Tell me your dad's story. He had tickets to go see Elvis, and he got arrested that night. Oh no! Yeah. Before the concert, right, right before the show. No. So he he didn't get to go, and then after that, you know, he never got a chance to do it again so all right yeah. so and Whoa, yeah my Lord dad he loves aviation just as much and all this so i was like oh, all right so sick. No, I don't. okay and what's his name john 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 yep all right so i need what i need you to do for me okay is uh 0629 that's oh, his birthday cool. Boom, right there. This is an actual piece of the Elvis jet. And this piece, this, I think, where would this have, this one would have been? That's actual dirt from Roswell, New Mexico. 
from oh, where yeah. it was sitting oh. for 40 years. And that green is the primer for the paint that's on it. Uh, it's crazy. This would have came from under on the bottom side of the wing. Okay. Of the airplane. That's why it's got a little, and that, that's why it's also the better color too. A lot oh. of the top stuff was really faded. Yeah, that had that fade look. All right, so that this is this for John. So hold awesome. the hold on to that. Two Jimmy's World shirts. What nice. could possibly go wrong? And then this one just says clear prop on the back. Cause that, and that's something my dad says as well. What could possibly go wrong? Oh he yeah. Says that a lot. Yeah. That's so this is the certificate of authenticity showing that it actually came from the Elvis jet. Oh wow. This is a copy of the FAA bill of sale showing Elvis Presley's personal name on it. Right there where he bought the airplane, which is wow. pretty stinking cool, on uh, December 22nd, 1976. 76. Now, I also, with all the serial numbers that are under a thousand, they get framed. You have your frame right here, oh, and that awesome. bill of sale gets taped to the back side like that. Now, normally I do this, but I'm trying to do it on the road right, here, a right. little, little rough. Um, and this is the backing. So it's an eight by 10 frame. Oh, cool. So this guy, this for you. Awesome. And this Thank one's you. for your dad. Okay. Uh, and this, this is a hat for somebody. And this is a shirt that he gave us as well. I don't know what size it is. Medium. Uh, here, you can put the hot sauces in there. Oh, yeah. There you go. Now you get to carry that. <laughs> Bam. Okay. So this guy, Jimmy, with Jimmy's World on YouTube, I got a hold of him and told him your story with Elvis. Okay. Very, uh, just carefully, and then I'll explain it to you. Slide it up. Yeah. yeah. Now, oh wow, look at that. This um, came off of the wing of oh, this plane. I'll be doing yeah. This right here is an authentic piece of Elvis's jet. Mm. So very, very, very few people have these. I do. <laughs> you do? <laughs> hey, Jimmy, I want to thank you for this. I really appreciate it. This, this also is a piece of my history because I'm really old. But I thank you for it and all you went through to get it out here. Thank you. So, Silas, it looks like you found some... <laughs> A bunch of ticks. That's just one foot. Of All those little black dots right there. Are they ticks? Oh, he's crawling around. Oh, yeah. Don't flick it off, I dude. Got it. We got to sleep it? on this bed. This guy's indestructible. He won't die. They, what is it? They're about a okay. million ticks. Wow. Um, shoot, Silas, don't throw it on the floor right here, dude. It's dead. I squished him. They're ticks? Yep. Ew. Come here and look, Bentley. Oh, yeah. I don't think what? I want oh, to ticks or enemies. Look at those. All those. Ew. Are be... all ticks. Don't they drink blood? Yeah. So they should just drop off. Yep. And they're, like, they're like bed bugs. What's that one? Is that a big one? Yeah. Looks like I it. I don't know what that is. <laughs> nice. <It took> me. <laughs> You can tell, but all those little specks are ticks. I guess they're called seed ticks, and that is insane and super gross. Camping, yay! And then to continue the saga known as Mountain Air, this toilet decided to not open up to let the stuff down inside any more so <gasps> seriously the valve or something but I don't think so God. and you're supposed to hit this twice and it's supposed to do something that's gross wasn't exactly what I had in mind for transferring stuff. Oh, gross! This thing is starting to leak. Did I mention it was made in China? Yeah. Well, I can't fix this thing. Maybe we can hunt down 
an RV wizard. That doesn't look good. That is red coolant. One of the nice things about having an RV is 100 and some gallons of water that we can top it off with. I'm filling this thing with water because we have a water leak, so I don't want it to overheat. So we're just gonna fill it up. That'll get us to our next place. Now, thankfully today is like 30 to 40 degrees cooler than it was yesterday, which is awesome. Shut the front door, Silas. Lock. <gasps> Those doors have locks. Yeah. This whole time we were just letting them slam open or closing them to like latch it. You didn't know that. You didn't know that. I didn't know that. No, I didn't know that. Why that trip? There you go. There you go. I've heard that I can find a wizard over there, and that must be the wizard sleigh. This is a 2016 Bentley Continental GT Speed. We have a cover on it right now, but it actually just had a small $10 circuit board as part of the security system for this that went bad. Completely disabled the car, it won't start. The parking brakes would disengage. It was a brick. That's crazy. So we're waiting on the part to show up, but right now it's an undrivable car. It's all apart, but uh, it came from St. Louis. Actually, most of the cars in here aren't even from this state. Not even from the state? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I believe it. How many Ferraris are going to be in, you know, Newton, Kansas? Yeah, <laughs> we get a lot of out-of-state stuff, people. This is a Ferrari 348. It's actually owned by, this one's local. This was actually here in the Wichita area. But it's here for a major service. As you can see, the engine is all the way out. Lots of pieces and parts off of it. We can walk back there and take a look at that. This is an 03 Lamborghini Murcielago. This one has a V12 in it, and it's here for a ton of work. It's actually getting close to the end, but it's there was a lot of stuff we had to send off to be rebuilt or refinished, and we've got all the parts back. Now we're starting to reassemble it, but this is the, the model that's after the 348. This is the 355. It has a similar engine. It has a V8 in the back as well. This one actually has the shifter that's called, like Jeremy Clarkson calls, flappy paddles. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. F1 transmission. Do, 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 do. It's having shifting issues and a few other things are going to get solved and then it'll it, be back on the road. Does, like the suspension, is it a hydraulic suspension or something funky with these? Yeah, it has a pneumatic, it's called, kind of like a pneumatic hydraulic suspension. It has spheres that have high pressure of nitrogen gas. That's what it is. And... It's, there's no coil springs or leaf springs or anything like that. Is it front-wheel drive? Uh, it is, yes. It's front-wheel drive. Okay, yeah, because I was looking at the floor, and it goes straight across like a minivan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So, uh, motorcycles, are you a bike guy, too? Uh, this is one of my employees' motorcycles. This is my old, <laughs> this is a 63 Duo Glide Harley. Wow. Yours? Yes, this one's mine. Oh, wow. That's super neat. I've been slowly fixing things here or there and going through it and... To start this thing, this is the distributor, and now that's to retard it, I assume. Yes. So you you crank it that way to retard it, mm -hmm. and then you gotta kick it. Is this a yep. kickstart? Kickstart only. Oh yeah. So it's a compression release. So the timing, whenever you're running, you have to get it closer to when the piston's all the way at the top, or else if normally it fires a little before that. But if you did that, it would fire too early, and it would go oh, and it'd be too much for you to kick it over so they move it back so it fires when it's all the way up so it helps right. you go boom down this is a oh no a crossfire car crossfire oh 1980 82 82 the last year the of last this year. wow fun fact they never made a corvette in 83 that's correct 
Weird, huh? Because mm -hmm. they says trained... they have an 83. No, they don't. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. They, but they use the same horrific motor in both this one and the wedgie cars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, they either work or they don't, and usually don't. This one's working okay. <laughs> Is it working now? Yeah, we're fixing the cruise control and some things on it, and then actually it's almost done, ready to go. That is too cool. Because the crossfire injection was two throttle bodies yes. with port, or not port, but uh, throttle body injection on them, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. As so you can see, it has two air cleaners there. Yeah. And then it was supposed to be, those were for that side and this was for this side with mm -hmm. the idea of getting the tuned port type of right. higher horsepower stuff. And but they never did get any higher horsepower. <laughs> <They didn't. laughs> it's like no. 200 or something. Yeah, this was the dark ages of American muscle atrophied muscle. Mm -hmm. You know, high horsepower was 200 yeah. out of a 350 cubic inch engine. <laughs> Keep on going. We got, of course, the, the Chevelle, right? 67. It's got a Jaguar V12 sitting in it. I'm sorry. Hold on. What? Wait, what? Yeah, that's a Jaguar V12, a six liter. In a Chevy Chevelle. Yes, in the Malibu. That's almost as bad as putting a Toyota like JZ2 or whatever in a Mustang. Yeah. So this is an Audi TT. Okay. Or, or an Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out, go if you haven't already. Uh, what's the name of the channel, your channel itself? Car Wizard. Oh, it is just, yeah, Car just Wizard. Okay, Car Wizard. So it makes it easy. Mm -hmm. So Car Wizard, go look at his stuff. You'll see lots more of the videos about this because we're all gearheads. We mm -hmm. all just love things that work and he's got some pretty interesting projects. And for uh, those of you out there that own some of this cool stuff, Omega Auto Clinic, mm -hmm. check them out. It's super, super neat stuff. So we'd be happy to service their cars. Yeah, man. All right. So thank you for that. Now I have something for you. They're going to be like, oh no, more junk. This is for your shop. It's hot sauce, RJ Guanas. So this is an actual piece of the Elvis jet. It came off of the wing, which that's what these parts are right here. And you at the citation plant did the trailing edge. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what this is. Yeah, I was thinking it looks very familiar. It does. And I, I grabbed the two coolest pieces I could find that have the stripes on it. Clearly, mm -hmm. this was the uh, top right here. Okay. And this, whenever they would try to laser engrave the back, that part of it, that's why these are not engraved, the laser would catch fire. Wow. <laughs> the epoxy that they used. And it would give out some really noxious fumes. Oh, man. And they're like, yeah, we can't do that inside the shop. So uh, uh, one of these is for you. Oh, wow, really? Okay, this really? one's for you. Yeah, that's for you. And this tag is also for you. And I've got uh, all these come. That's a picture of the Elvis jet whenever I bought it. And you can see wow. there. And then this is a copy of the bill of sale when Elvis bought it. Uh, and this is a certificate of authenticity here. If I can get it out. Come on now saying that this piece is actually a part of the Elvis jet. And I mean, you've got, you just add up one, two, three, four, five, you know, that's a, that's a big old chunk of the jet. So I got the number 1531. 1531. Why, why would, can you, can you think of any reason why that would be uh, significant or, or noticeable for you? Was that the tail number? No. No, for you personally. For me. Yeah. For Omega. No, Auto I Clinic. don't know. Seriously, Jenny, his wife is over there like, come on. The oh, the phone number. It's the phone number. <laughs> okay. I was just thinking it was something more, probably more than just a phone number, but I guess it's just simple, huh? Yeah, keep, I keep it simple. All right. Also, for, you know, help people remember whenever they call you. Awesome. All right, so this is, that's the envelope. Here, we can uh, slide all that down in there. Keep that. So that's, that's all yours. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Appreciate now this it. one is for Tyler. Okay. So it's the same thing off of the other wing, the mm -hmm. trailing edge. Don't need to go into that. Now I got him tag number 1895 because Tyler bought the farm. Right, <laughs> 1895, that's 1895. right. 1895, that was the year, you know, roughly that his farm was established. And uh, we all know what happens when you buy the farm. Good luck, you know, <laughs> welcome to the world of poor financial decisions. That's right. That is, that, that's our world, really. That's Jimmy's world. So, Tyler, this is for you. Bummer you couldn't be here. Would have loved to have met you, but uh, 
Now, I don't know what you guys are going to do with these, if I'm honest with you. I, maybe I might post this in my office or something as a display and yeah, a shelf or something. I don't have any idea. But also for Tyler, when you have a farm, you have random stuff. Yeah. That's just when you have a farm, you got like, what's that? Oh, that came off of something, something, something right. back in, you know, mm -hmm. five and whatever. So that's my gift to you, uh, Tyler, is random stuff to put on your farm to seed it so that it it populates. I can tell you he's going to be very excited to receive it. Well, good. good. Next stop, Denver, Colorado. From Florida to Colorado, the winner of the worst roads in the country, Colorado, you won. This is terrific. Hey, he heard you. You must have gone around the block. Hey. Did you go around the block? Oh. Hey. <laughs> Did you bring the whole house? Hi, come here. Yeah. How you doing, buddy? Oh, my love. significantly worse. Oh man. The leak is getting worse. Great. <sighs> Generator. It turned off yesterday. We don't know why. Let's turn it back on. Ooh, that does not sound good. That sounds like it's out of gas. Our wheel is making funny noises as I rolled the window down to get cool air. I don't know if you can hear that or not. I doubt it. Can you hear that? Dude, we are in Golden, Colorado. The river is right there. How awesome is that? I see two other rigs the same size that we are, so I think we're good. And I, th I already know which we're going to go in that way and pull in. Uh, we discovered that Missouri has chiggers. <laughs> you do have a disease it's called being a teenager oh and not wearing socks. Look at that, dude! I can't wear socks to sleep. It's uncomfortable. Holy moly! Hey, good morning. We survived our first night, and you know what? I have a very special thing that I want to do today. Uh -oh. Work on the RV. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Didn't you do that yesterday? <laughs> yes, I did. As a matter of fact, it's amazing. Didn't you do that, like the day before? Yes, I did. You're good at this. That's my new favorite thing. I love working on the RV, especially when we're trying to drive cross country. Insert sarcasm here. Overnight, we discovered yet another problem. Apparently, the leveling jacks leak down some. Uh, that's that's great. Uh, the toilet's busted. We have a coolant leak here. The gener generator is, is toast. Maybe not toast, it's got issues. Uh, I've lost track of things. All I know is this is my life now, and I chose this, and I am glad that I did. This is character building, family memories. I also just realized we're in Colorado where pot and most other drugs are legal. I think I have to check some of that out. Yeah, that's, that's never good. <laughs> Okay, right there, where that connection is. I love my life. This is great. I love this stuff. Uh, the patient is stable, but far from recovery. Deal is, this is our hot water heater and it gets hot water from an electric burner from a diesel burner, that's the exhaust right there. It also gets 
from the engine itself where a coolant line comes back through here, cycles in through, and you go. And that's what's leaking. Ideally, and apparently what I've discovered on Google, is that a lot of people just cut it off and bypass it because apparently it's a very common problem on these RVs. Uh, but yeah, you know, we're, I don't even know what to do at this point. We, I've slowed the bleeding down a little bit, so hopefully it'll, it'll be enough to get it to where we can have more time. It couldn't be a Jimmy's World video without some airplane flying, and I've got an ultimate super cool special guest today. Uh, all I'm going to say is I've got the need for speed. Okay, need for speed may be an overstatement. This is our chariot for the day. Gonna get the camera set up and wait for John to get here. I had to show you this. That says 5,800 feet and we're on the ground. <laughs> That's so funny. Cause we're, we're already above, you know, a mile high, right? Denver and the airplane, because of the temperature and humidity and some other things, thinks it's at over 7,000 feet right now. So yeah, she's gonna be a high performance machine today. Hey, there he is, John. How are you? Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. You as well. So we're flying together. We're flying together, baby. What, what could possibly go wrong? Man? That's right, that's right. <laughs> We've never flown together. I have no, and here's a secret. Um, I don't know if this will catch this. I've never actually flown in a high wing airplane. You know what? Me either. Oh, good. <coughs> well, then we're in good company. Well, that's, that's going to be fine. This is the first 172 I've been in, and we're we're comfortable with each other. Are other ones a little wider? I don't know. I've never been in a 172. No, like what you fly with. Like. Uh, Pippers. Well, okay, the Cherokee. Is, there's a, those are pretty comfy. Yep. The Lance Air, I'd be sitting on your lap. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> it's only big enough for two NRX supermodels. <laughs> um, the 310 is spacious. The Cherokee 6 was spacious. The the Jetstar has got lots of room. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, now the one thing that you have to do though is you gotta get a. You gotta, you gotta say that. That's the only way this is gonna start. Okay, you ready? If you can show right, clear, that. Clear, prop. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah. All right, uh, Alpha Nine, Alpha. To... It's gonna take us a while to get 400 feet <laughs> to get those slaps up. Yeah, I did. What are we climbing at? Well, 400 feet per minute. Yeah, that's nice. Although we're dropping speed a little bit. <laughs> I'm guessing 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, that's hysterical. That's about this. You know, my uh, my Lance Air will do it from sea level in about six minutes. Really? Yeah. So we can go to 7,500 from 7,000 feet in six minutes. Yeah. 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 Actually, yeah. you know, not too bad. Yeah, I'm going to check your cards. 400. Oh, Altimeter is 3031. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. Tool and south, 7,500 on the button. Nice. At a whopping 90 knots, 95 knots. Even. Well, I did pull the power back. Okay. Well, this is the man, the myth, the legend, John Ramstead. Uh, he uh, he's 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 done a couple things with aviation. Uh, F-14 fighter pilot. Done some uh, really interesting stuff there. Maybe we'll. I got a couple questions for you about that. As a naval aviator. You've watched Maverick, right? The movie Top Gun Maverick? Multiple times. Yes, okay, yeah, good. Okay, I know, yeah. okay. Yeah, every everybody has. That's why my wife, this mustache, yeah. 100% her idea after we went and watched the movie. <laughs> I cannot, for the viewers to ask me, I cannot shave it off because my wife is demanding I have the mustache because of that movie. And until she determines otherwise, the mustache stays. Wow, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so, in Top Gun Maverick, is it realistic? Like the stuff that they're doing and like the, you know, the, you know, the, that. Okay. Um, here, first of all, they had to create a scenario to use the F-18, you know, in that yeah. target area, right? Yeah. So let's just, you they know. they would have used the F-35 probably. Yeah, they would have used some other things, but you or know what? Or a drone. They probably wouldn't even have sent a person in there. Yeah, so you got, you know, so you got to have a reason, which, you know, it was not a bad reason. But I'll tell you this, the tactics and the flying they did is absolute flying that we did. 
Really? 100%. As a matter of fact, I was a LAT instructor, low altitude tactics. Oh. Cool. So we, we would do missions where you and I are flying welded wing. Through, look at these canyons here. We're in Colorado. What do you, what do you mean welded wing? Is that where like you're this. super tight formation? Yeah, probably. You know, you're not. It's not like Blue Angel tight, but you're probably within 20, 30 yards of each other, <laughs> up up to 100 yards. And you're doing like 500 knots or something. Yeah, 500 knots, and then you might have a max altitude. We would usually have a hard deck of 100 feet for safety, <laughs> but you're between 100 and 300. Holy crap. And you're ripping around. Now think about this. 100 feet off of the ground doing 500 knots. Now think about this. Like, So this is a valley right here. We're, you know, we're flying along, we're looking at this valley. And let's just say this valley took a 90 degree turn. So here's one of the things we would teach everybody. So you're, you're coming into the valley, and all of a sudden, this guy here just starts his turn. He just starts ripping right in front of you. Okay? Yeah. And then I'll delay my turn and I'll come out and the, the way you time it is you come back into that mutual formation welded wing after the turn. Okay, so those sure. are the things you practice here, so always in mutual support because you also have your sight lines. I, I'm looking out at you, so this is your, we're getting a little bitter. Yeah, we want to head south and stay away from that stuff over there. Yeah, I'm going to turn. I'm going to turn around and kind of loop out this way a little bit. All right. Yeah. Although it's doing a good job of getting some of the bugs off. Of yes, it there. is. Yeah. So yeah, we would fly that, and you know something else. Um, if you watch now, if you watch it closely, you'll notice this. He crap when they when they got to do that big climb out. Yeah. You'll notice on the front of the stick there's a paddle. And the paddle disconnects the G limiter. The F-18 will not let you overstress the airplane. At what's the stress limit without the paddle? I think the F-18 is, I think it's 7.8. Oh, that's not, I mean, that's a lot, but it's not like an insane amount. F-14 was only 7.2. Yeah. Right, the, the F-16, which I flew, was 9.0. That's just that's painful. <laughs> There's a huge difference between seven and nine. Nine hertz, <laughs> yeah. I don't care what you say, nine hertz. But so what's the most G's you've ever pulled? Nine. Nine in the Nine F-16? In F-16. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. yeah, that's just... Ah, yeah. Uh, your face deforms and your chin ends up on your lap and stuff. Yeah, you only do that because you have to. You do it the first time because you want to, and then you only do it after that because you have to. Um, but you'll notice when he grabs the stick, they actually pull that paddle in, which disconnects the G-limiter, which is the only way the, F the Hornet can go past that G-limit. Yeah. So that, you know, they, they tried to be as realistic in the flying as they could. So what is the, what's the actual G limit of the airplane then when they pull that paddle and they yank back? As far as you can go until you break it. <laughs> tell, tell me more about your naval aviator. I, I want to know the scariest moment in your flying co career. Because you've done some, you were in the military, Navy stuff. And then you were flying commercial stuff after that for a little while. And yep. then you had a Top Gun uh, thing, but because of an unfortunate softball accident. Yep. So yeah, just hit, hit, the, hit the highlights. And then I want to know what the scariest moment of your flying career was. Uh, well, the scariest moment, uh, that's easy. I was coming in after a, a mission in Iraq late at night. It was, I don't know, probably four in the morning. And, uh, you know, everybody's clearly tired. I'm coming into land, and the guy who landed on the carrier in front of me uh, didn't get out of the landing area soon enough, so they had to wave me off. So all of a sudden, your, your sight picture at night is, there's almost no depth perception, even with the moon and stars out. It almost feels, because you're coming in at 150 miles an hour, it feels like you're too high and coming in too fast to land safely. It's just, your brain is rebelling every time. That was my ex own experience. But I'm coming in, and all of a sudden the, the, the lights go off, flashing red everywhere, and I hear wave off, wave off, wave off. So you go to full power, and at night, you can't see the ocean. Right? I'm probably at this oh, point yeah. at about literally 150, 200 feet off the water. Oh. So I go to 100% power, pull the nose up, and what I always did around the boat at night is I climbed as aggressively as I could. So I'm at full power, so I'm probably 25, 30 degrees nose up. After dirty. burner, the whole nope. thing? Not after burner, because you gotta, you got to manage your fuel around the boat because you oh. don't want to go tank at night go get gas airborne tank gas oh right but i'm climbing up and they tell they give me a 2000 foot l2 climb to 2000 feet and come back around while i'm passing 1200 feet and they're like you know freelancer 207 uh you know uh climb maintain 1200 feet which i'm blowing through so i pull both throttles back to idle and start pushing the nose over <laughs> and i get doo -doo 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 -doo. i get dual engine stall i snuffed both engines 
Oh. I snuffed both engines. I had just cleaned up the airplane, so I'm clean. My gear and flaps are up, and I'm literally at about now 1,400 feet with no engines. Over the boat, I can't see anything. It's pitch black everywhere. And I, the first thing I did was grab my ejection handle. It was a, my first gut reaction. I'm like, oh crap, no, I got checklist. I got it. Okay, bold face. Did, did, did. I'm going through them. I do this, and I'm, and I'm cranking on the engine and restart. Now we're already heading down. I, I, I immediately pack our best, you know, uh, glide speed, which is like 230 knots. <laughs> I mean, we're, I you're, you're a rock, <laughs> right? So I'm heading down, and by about a thousand feet, I get the engine starting to crank. Yeah, let's kind of okay, yeah. jog left about 30 degrees. Yeah. Yeah, with this little sightseeing out here. Um, and and it's starting to crank, and it takes a long time because we don't have the, the velocity to really help it out. So the air starts starting to happen, and we, we pass 800 feet, and it's not even halfway to the RPM where I can get the fuel going. I got the igniters going, right? It's a jet engine. And then all of a sudden, um, at 500 feet, our, my back seater is talking to the tower. They're yelling for us to eject. But I'm like, no, hold it, hold it. I'm almost there, I'm almost there, I'm almost there. And we hit 17% RPM, and I could put in the, the fuel, and the thing lights. It starts to spin up. But now we're at 400 feet, we're at 300 feet, we're at 200 feet. And the guy in my back seat, he is like, Do you, you know, we, you know, he's watching it too. He's like, man, we got to eject. I'm like, hold it, I got it, I got it. And then all of a sudden, I almost felt like, it's almost like our rate of descent almost uh, slowed down. There's no explanation on why it slowed down. Because we weren't still at full thrust. All of a sudden, it hit 100% power. I hit full afterburner. We bottomed out um, just below 100 feet on one engine and full afterburner. Climbed back up. I had to go out and accelerate to get the next engine going. And then I had now, now my my heart rate's at about 190 <laughs> yeah, and my adrenaline's pumping and I gotta come back around and now try to land again. Oh. And I thought for sure I was gonna have to, I, I was either gonna smack into the water um, or have to, or eject in the ocean right in front of the boat, which is also kind of scary because you can't see it. It's yeah. The, that's one of, one of the scariest things I had. Golly. Now, I mean, geez, that's that's scary. Now, is that that's not the same mission where you guys were in uh, radio silence and you had to navigate all the way back by like the stars and stuff like that? Some crazy. Oh, that was to that was a totally different mission. Okay, what was that? What was that about? Oh, that was a bad night. Um, <laughs> we, we we took off. And we were the only F-14 in our flight that actually was able to launch because of maintenance issues. So we got we got attached to an F-18 flight, and we went in and we did a couple missions over Baghdad, actually North Baghdad, Basra, you know, a couple different areas. And so we detached from the Hornet flight, and we're back over the Persian Gulf. And I'm finally like, oh my God, I mean, it was a pretty tense uh, mission. Were people were you getting shot at and stuff? There was some opposition on the ground. We kept getting lit up by surface to, uh, ground radar. They never actually launched any missiles at us, but our, our radar warning receivers were constantly going off. Every time they go off, you gotta, you know, you gotta take the airplane and you flip it on its, you know, 90 degrees on the knife edge, and you're looking for anything, smoke, uh, you know, a oh, light. Wow. Uh, I mean, you're, you're, it feels. And sometimes I think they would do it just to. Uh, here, why don't you cut about? Yes, yeah. But come back uh, west. Right. Turn to west. Um, and um, so I'm looking up at the stars, I'm relaxing, and we were doing something that night, it was called an MCON recovery, emissions control. There were some threats around the carrier, and we also practiced this, but uh, we were told this tonight, this evening was, was not an exercise. Everything's turned off, radio, well, radios are on, but navigation, radar, ILS, TACAN, VOR, everything's turned off, lights, and you basically they say, okay, that area, let's say where Centennial is, that's where we're going to be in that area when you come back. So you got to, so we had this whole procedure to come in and find the boat. Well, I, I got on the intercom and I said, hey, Spike, you know, what's the vector to Mother? And mother was what we called the ship. He goes, uh, Rammer, our INS is inoperable. He used a different word, but oh, yeah. <laughs> it was not working. We didn't have GPS back then. This is 1990, 91, 92. They were just coming out. God. So we, did, we had no idea. And I'm like, oh crap, well, we talked about it. If I got on the radio um, and we said, when we got a vector to mother, which they would give us, that would have been uh, what we considered a career limiting move. Yeah, I bet. Okay, because you're putting the battle group at risk. This is not, not just about, you know, uh, our crew. 
The other thing is, the Persian Gulf is nasty. There's 57 varieties of sea snakes. You oh. can see them swimming everywhere when the ships go what? through. And, no. oh, dude, yeah, look it up. 57 what? varieties, and they're all crazy colors, and the flight surgeon comes in, he's like, okay, guys, here's the deal. There's, they, they need like three different kind of anti-venoms. They got neurotoxin, blood toxin, and this thing. And, and he's like, okay, if you get bit, if you eject, they're aggressive. So if you get bit, try to grab it and kill it so we know what anti-venom to give you. Holy crap, stuff in your pocket. I'm like, are you, <laughs> we like, like, grow this guy. Like, we made fun of him for months, but I'm sitting there with Spike. I'm like, okay, we either make a radio call, but if we're, we have a fuel ladder, we're very good with our fuel planning. We estimated we got about 15 minutes of fuel um, we could make a guess, an educated guess, um, but in 15 minutes or less, we'd have to get on the radio and make a call, or we'd possibly have to be ejecting. Yeah. So we looked up, you know, and we're like, okay. Killed by sea snakes. I get killed by sea snakes, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I look up, I'm like, okay, dude, there's the North Star. Yeah, in northern Georgia. Right, so we, okay. we had to take celestial navigation as pilots, so we did, we did that. Yeah, we want to stay right. in this box right here. Yeah, and I'm going to stay clear of that rain that's moving this way. Yep. And, uh, and we said, okay, there's that other constellation. So our guess is let's head this direction, ish, right? And so we head this direction, we're just flying. You see that traffic over there at like two o'clock way in the distance? Okay, yeah. That little teeny speck? Yep. All of a sudden, way in the distance, we saw a little light because at night we didn't have any of our strobes or beacons on. What we do have turned on though are these little strips and they're kind of this fluorescent green for flying formation at night. Okay. And we could just barely see it. I'm like, oh. I think, that's so we started that, that heading toward it, so we had just, it was another airplane from the carrier, oh. we thought, so we move, we turn toward it, we get closer, we start to see some other ones, and we come in, and we do the recovery the way that we're supposed to, we hadn't said a word to anybody, and we land, <laughs> and we went to mid-rats, midnight rations, and we're sitting there eating pizza, looking at each other, and going, who knew that that <laughs> stupid course in college might have just saved our life? <laughs> so how long were you in the Navy? I was in for about eight years. Eight years. So I got in in 88 and got out at the end of 95. Okay, but you went so. in uh, as a pilot, right? Yep. Going in on a pilot course. Yep. And just walk me through briefly what it is, and then it led all the way up to the Top Gun School. Well, yeah, it was interesting. So, um, I mean, Top Gun came out in 1986, so I'm in college. Oh, the movie, yeah. The first movie, right? Yeah. I was about to be a junior in college. And I was just making our call. Do a 180 here, clearing turn, deep turn. Woo, so yeah, so I was heading down to flight school. I got, I, I actually got in. I got my orders. I'm heading down to flight school, and then our class officer said, "Hey, one out of every 10,000 people, because this movie has made it so popular, who applies and all the different programs are going to get to fly a fighter." Oh wow! So I'm freaking out. Like, what did I do? This is stupid. I'm going to fail. I'm going to be embarrassed. And my dad pulled me aside and gave me some great advice I've actually used in business and for the rest of my life. He said, uh, when you get down there, there's going to be a guy everybody calls the ace of the base, right? There's going to be a student everybody's talking about. But here's what I want you to do is he's figured something else out that nobody else is doing. Go find him and buy him a beer and ask him if he'll tell you what he's doing. Well, that guy was this guy named John Foster, and I, everybody was talking about him. Nobody had ever seen a student with grades like he had. He was, he was like uh, head and shoulders above everybody else. And uh, he told me what he was doing. It wasn't intuitive. It's not something I would have thought of. And I started just doing what he was doing. And I ended up graduating my primary flight school class, number one, because of his mentorship. Oh, wow. And putting in the work. And then I uh, did the same thing in jets. And I was actually able to choose to fly the F-14. But think about that. So here's the here was the business takeaway. It doesn't matter what it is, is right? Go find somebody that's done what you want to do. Ask them what they did to get the results. Ask yourself if you're willing to do what they did to get those results. And if the, your answer is yes, commit, tell somebody, and then don't be willing not to give up. Because there's always going to be adversities, you know, right? Building businesses and everything. And so, that, you know, there's a lot of highs and lows. Went to my eight years in, I went to seven funerals. I mean, it oh, was, wow. right, that's that's pretty sobering when you realize what you're doing. So. We separated parallel runways. Hazardous Run Information Colorado is available on flight service. Local note on runway 28, happy lights are out of service. Right there? Yeah, that's nasty stuff. X-ray. 
Well, there's the airport, so we're heading straight home. Yep. Uh, we'll, we'll have plenty of time. It's, that's not moving super fast, but we're probably going to still be in the airplane when it starts raining. Yeah, but so when I got down there, you know, and there's just so much work. I mean, in the, in the, it was a really cool culture, though, right? It was, the stakes were so high for all of us. Everyone had a dream, you know, to fly jets and fly up aircraft carriers. And the slots were limited. Like, you had to have a certain... Uh, think of it like a GPA, right? Everything was graded the, the that, turn right. that you did. And then you had to be above a certain cutoff to even fly for jets. So we were all competing. And then let's say there was one or two jet slots for an entire, there was six training squadrons. So there might be 30, 40, 50 guys graduate, let's say in a month. And there might literally be, sometimes there was only one or two jet slots and everything else was wow. helos, props, you know, think transport. Um, but everybody shared what they were learning. It was like this amazing kind of place of co-opetition, so to speak. Uh, co-opetition, that's really good. Right? It was uh, just an incredible culture. Ten mile final. We had to make sure, just a little bit. <laughs> we'll be there. Okay, so how did you get the north up? That little button right there. That doohickey. Yeah. Sky 2, sir, pop, you cover that? On my check ride, on my multi-engine check ride, I missed the three green down and locked, and we were on short final. And I had somebody holding short, and they said, one, three, one, Delta Papa, your gear's not down. And I looked, I'm like, oh, we were single engine approach, too. <laughs> so I was like, ah! It's oh, because your single engine, the, harm, the, the, the bell's probably going off, right? Uh, well, it's an old 1950-something Apache where they, there's no nannies on that thing. You you flew it like a man. You you crashed like a man. <laughs> this, wow. is, this is part of the flight where you're not supposed to ask questions and let the pilot actually land the airplane. So we'll, we'll just wait. Okay. Because, like, what's flap speed on this? Is that 110 knots? Is that what that is? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 110, then 85. So I could go 20 now. So imagine though, if we were coming in right now and you're at 140 knots. Yeah. And you and if you don't put your tail hook right in where the yeah, white stripes are, go you're going around. around. Just feels like a Sunday stroll right now, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm telling you, I was gonna get the paddle and start canoeing on this thing, man. Just <laughs> we're almost there. Yeah, we're almost there. I was carrying a little too much speed there. That was your Navy carrier landing, just plant it. Fight. Have you ever been in a real dog fight? Not with an enemy aircraft. Okay, all right. Have yep. you ever been shot at, like missile, or have you ever had to do the evasive, like those flares or whatever? Uh, one time. Really? Yep. We were coming in over a sp suspected SAM site, and we got all the missile launch indications. We couldn't see it, so we had to assume it was in the air. So we went through all the procedures. You know, uh, we have a special maneuvers that you do that you practice, you know, to defeat the kind of missile that it is. And, you know, kicking out chaffin flares, and then we're looking, we never saw a missile in the air, but... Um, we're going around that way and we'll come back in. Is this airplane? Yeah, we're gonna, well... Can you make that? I don't know how big this thing is. I don't want to try. I'd rather go down this way and come back around. Yeah. Roger, waiting eye for release. Usually you're landing 3-5 and 1-7, so you're coming down the other side. But we're just gonna we're just gonna go loop around. As long as there's nobody in this alley here. They shot down a couple of our airplanes. I I think an F sixteen, a couple Hornets, one Tomcat, and other than that, that was it. And then after that or I guess during all that, that's pretty much owned it owned the skies from there. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we used to do missions that we would design to fool them, to get them to come up, thinking like we only had one plane, we were an easy target. We'd run in with our radars turned off. They were so afraid of the F-14 because of our Phoenix missile, they would just scatter. I mean, they would run away. So we would, in, we would try to go in with our radars turned off and using the AWACS, the radar, you know, Air Force radar controller, to try to vector us toward a bogey just so we could have something to do. <laughs> we got close once and then he visually saw us. We were we got within about eight miles um, of a bogey. And then I think as soon as he ID'd us, he literally did a 180 and afterburner 
and dove down into a surface air missile ring. What, we could not follow them. What what type of aircraft were they flying? Um, that would that would have been a I think it was a MiG-23. Yeah. Which is an old Soviet. How how did it come about the the Top Gun stuff or being invited or how how does that work in real life? Well, in real life, there's no Top Gun competition. There's no like you graduated one two three. Um, the pilots would kind of keep score amongst themselves, but. What you're there is to create excellence um, in what you do, and then you have to go back to the squadron and take everything you learn. It's basically, think of it as train the trainer. You're going there to become an expert, and then you go back to the squadron, and then you become the pilot training officer. That is your job. You're going to Top Gun to get trained, and then you take all that knowledge, and you give it back to everybody in your squadron. That is, that's how it works. Um, and I got orders, so I got called into my commanding officer stateroom and said, hey, Ramstead, you're the guy who's going. Uh, man, it was, I could not have been more thrilled. It was absolutely a dream come true. And then the next weekend, I was playing softball. The next weekend, and I hear, watch out! And I look, and poof, I got drilled in the eye with a, uh, with a uh, softball. I had a blowout fracture and nerve damage. Oh. And I had double vision, and I lost my medical... And this is 95. Clinton was drawn down the Navy, and because my medical was no longer valid after six months, I got processed out. Oh, it was brutal. Gosh. All right, so after you got out processed out, you lost your medical. That was for the Navy. Were you able to, well, you, you still were able to fly civilian-wise, though, right? Well, uh, no, I couldn't pass the, because of the double vision. I mean, I could have cheated the test, but I didn't want to, right? Six months after I got out, I noticed, I didn't notice the double vision. So I went and saw the ophthalmologist. He's like, yeah, it's gone. I'm like, oh, you're so, <laughs> so I immediately applied to get back in the yeah. military. Like oh, I immediately, yeah. and my old commanding officer was now the commanding officer of all Naval Reserve Squadrons. And so I'm like, okay, he wrote me a letter of recommendation. Well, guess what? There was like 30 or 40 applications and they had one spot for a reserve pilot. And this wasn't even flying fighters. This was flying DC nines. <laughs> and I didn't Small get it. Stuff. I didn't get it. Oh man! They gave it to a P three pilot because it's multi engine. So, um, so I applied. So I I started. Uh, man, that was hard. You know what? When your identity is you know who you are and what you do, yeah. and it's taken away, that was that was a really hard transition. I mean, I was in San Diego. I'd been stationed at Miramar. I went to I went to the strike fighter weapons school and instructed on the ground hoping that it would come back. So I was part of the community, but I never got you know I never got to fly there. And then I'm sitting there, I got a job selling cell phones. I'm knocking on doors hoping somebody's home to sell them a cell phone, and jets are going over my head. No oh, man, was, it's a good thing I wasn't armed. <laughs> yeah, golly. Um, but through, uh, that was a whole journey. It was through that that I you know found a great church and got really got some great things lined up in my life through that but that was a hard transition but in that a buddy of mine was flying for um, Atlantic Coast Airlines which was United Express and once I got my medical back he goes hey listen they're hiring so let me why chief pilot's friend so I got I got hired by Atlantic Coast I was flying J32s jet jet stream 32 twin turboprop no autopilot flying five to seven legs a day totally manual Gosh. My stick and rudder skills, instrument flying skills, were never better. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I I'm, bet. I'm, it was, you know, you're you're flying four, five, six hours a day. I mean, there's no there's no magic anything. Yeah. It was it was all steam gauges. Yeah. And the Garrett engines, these big, I mean, they are noisy as all get out. And was they, it like cargo or something? Or was it people? No, it was passengers. No people. Nineteen people. No bathroom. <laughs> people come back from like Vegas into Dulles, and I'm flying up to like Harrisburg, and like, and they're like, "Where's the head?" I'm like. Uh, we don't have one. Oh my oh, gosh! People were, yeah. It, I'll never. What I got one story though. This is another time I was scared. I flew through a microburst. Ooh. We were coming into Dallas to land, and uh, we hadn't even been warned of microburst. And I'll never forget. I was sitting in the right seat, and it was a female captain, and she's flying the airplane, and we have different responsibilities. And all of a sudden, we hit severe turbulence. The airplane was shaking so hard, I literally couldn't even read the instrument panel. So I told Jeez. her, I'm going to just watch altitude VSI. And, you know, she had her hand on the throttle, right? Because that's how you land. I'm like, um, I, I had her just put two hands on the yoke. 
because it was the only way to even try to control the airplane. And I'm working the throttle and watching the airspeed in the VSI. Is she's just looking out. That's all we could do. Yeah. And, and I'll, I've never been shaken so hard in my life. <laughs> I mean, literally shaking short. I thought instruments were going to fall out of the panel, and we're getting pushed down, and she's pulling up, and and I'm gutting the power, and then it was just, and how we landed safely. She <laughs> she put it on the deck safely, and I'm thinking, okay, we're going to land and roll out, and people are going to be like, yeah, you saved our life. Not a word. <laughs> Not a word. And I'm like, okay, I don't really want to turn around. So we get into the gate and we shut off, and I'm like, still not a word. And I turn around and I look at all the people back here and they're white <laughs> as a sheet. I'll guarantee yeah, you, I'll guarantee you there's people from that flight that still talk about it and it's the reason they don't fly to this day. Yep. Some of them met Jesus. Some of them <laughs> they were met. getting ready to. Oh. So I was like, woo! I think, I, I think if I didn't have so much to do in that moment, that's exactly what I would have been thinking. You're like, we're all going to, this is how it ends. This is how it ends. <laughs> is how I don't, I've never, I don't know how an airplane flies through that. I've never, I've yeah. never experienced anything like that. And since, never again. Uh, never since. since. No, that my, that is scary stuff. A microburst like that. Man. Yeah. Wowzers, wowzers, wowzers. Well, uh, we 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 have lots more story to tell, and we haven't even gotten to the like the crazy, you know, Superman, the horse, you know, kind of sort of paralyzed, like not paralyzed, but like uh, knocking on death's door for quite a while, part of the journey, and now. How long has it been? We'll have to go flying again. I think we'll have to go flying again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the accident that I had that put me in the hospital for two years was September of 2011. So we're right. coming up on my 12th year anniversary. Yeah. And I probably got back to full full time work just in the last year and a half. Yeah. And it was, now it was you, that long of recovery. It was your first, your second first solo since getting your medical back because it took years and years to recover enough to be able to fly again oh yeah until I felt I think comfortable in an airplane my left eye is blind from the accident had 25 surgeries and so yeah this is exciting so uh, Jimmy here wanted to make sure he was my first solo but I just got Freaking I got guy he's I like oh, I couldn't, I couldn't wait, wait. I couldn't wait. I couldn't have patience and I'm like okay we can't film your first solo back so I guess we'll go out in thunderstorms or something <laughs> In this That's right. shag and wagon of a <laughs> this is a little shag and 17. wagon. This is, it flies though. Um, so literally, I got my. I finally got my medical back. It was about ten years working with the FNA back and forth. Finally got my medical, and then literally about a month ago, I started flying. So I think I've flown about eight hours with an instructor. Yeah. So um, uh, I did in instrument currency. Did uh, mountain currency. We went out because I was mountain uh, before, uh, which is. If you ever get a chance to just do that, mountain flying is really interesting. Wait, There's a lot to learn about. I was going to say about, a lot of the weather. About the, the weather, the winds, the, the ridge crossings. Like, how, how do you... You start thinking At about airplanes... 24,000 feet, that's how you do it. Well, then, you, yeah, then, you, <laughs> then it's different. <laughs> yes. yes. But when you're flying through passes, it's really beautiful flying. You're literally 1 to 3,000 AGL flying through the mountains and oh, the passes. Wow. It depends on the weather. you yeah. got to make sure you have... And the winds have to be right. Cause, but anyway... But I finally got current, and then I did uh, about a week ago. I was good to go. So I said, I'm going flying alone for the first time, and a friend of mine went with me. Um, you might even. Wait, a friend of yours went with you on your solo. So it wasn't a solo flight. Yeah, I haven't. Have I flown alone? No, I haven't. So I actually haven't been just me alone in the airplane. That would be interesting. I've always been. And you, now you flew. And you're a pilot, right? I mean, you could be like, okay, Ramstead, I'm, I know you flew a lot, but I'm taking it over. <laughs> we could have gone there. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking guy's blind in one eye, he's half crazy, brain damn, no. Uh, wait, so part of that story is you flew to an event I did a yeah. retreat type of thing. So I had you, a Cirrus, an SR-22, a G3. Yeah. So that I flew from Denver to Great Falls, Montana. It's okay. about a three and a half hour flight, up at twenty five thousand feet. Beautiful flight. I loved it. And then it was the next day, I got on a horse, and then uh, we were gonna. It was this retreat for a nonprofit, and uh, and uh, it was supposed to be lunch at the back of this beautiful ranch up outside of Great Falls, and my horse just bolts and takes off. And at a full gallop, like we had like 80 yards to head, he just kept going faster and faster. I couldn't get him to turn or stop. And and um, I just remember right in front of the fence thinking, this is not going to end well. And that's the last thing I remember. He came to the fence and he bucked so hard he flipped over. 
slammed it in the fence. When he did that, he launched me Superman into a three inch steel beam that went across here. So I caved in this whole part of my skull. I broke all the bones in my skull except my jaw and my cheekbone. That's why my eyes blind. All this was shattered. Um, broke my neck um, at C2, lost eight teeth, shattered my shoulder. And then the next part, I completely crushed my rib cage and I had broken ribs, punctured my lung. And um, I ended up in, I was in the hospital the next almost two years, 25 surgeries. We found out what happened to me is not medically survivable. So I, I can share the details if you want, but I, at, on the ground in Great Falls, I was in God's presence and I was told that I was gonna be healed and given a second chance. And it was game changing. And this is it. This is it, and I, you know what, it was, uh, we talked to multiple doctors that said just even the head trauma, where the neck fracture was, I had no spinal cord damage, just even the trauma to my chest, any one of those should be life ending. I even had a guy came back, to, he'd been a doctor in Iraq, and he said, listen, he reached out to me just a couple years ago and said, man, just, I gotta tell you, I totally walked away from my faith what, from what I saw in Iraq. I couldn't reconcile things, but I was also watching you recover, and I also knew your case, I was a consulting doc, and I know it's not possible. I just want to thank you because I've come back to my faith just watching what God did in your life. So it's been an amazing journey. It was a long journey with a brain injury, right? I only, after th th two years in the hospital, I only could work a couple hours a week. That's kind of when we we yeah. really started hanging out and you were uh, building a roofing company, yep. right? Just starting to get into flying. <laughs> no, I had you, nothing you had to do with flying. Nothing to do with flying yet. No. That's right. That wasn't until I joined the military. That's right. You yeah. joined, I'm like, you're going to, what? You're like, yeah, I'm joining. 40, at I'm like, 40. I'm like, God, I got like a month before the deadline. I'm like, well, you go, boy. <laughs> boy, that turned out well. How was that? No, it was a terrible idea, actually. <laughs> it, was, it was absolutely terrible well, You idea. know, it's funny. I was thinking to myself, that's a terrible idea, but there is no stopping you. There is no. <laughs> you guys know this, right? Hey, yeah, maybe I'll buy Elvis's jet. See, There's no stopping was, you. No, that I mean that's a that's a that's a financially astute decision. I'm not that. saying as a, I'm just saying when you get an idea, there is no stopping. Yeah. I wonder like, if that thing will fly. Hmm. With enough money, yes. Anything will. Anything yeah, will. Right. Look at this airplane. There's proof. Yeah, it's positive still. That. I'm guessing twenty thousand hours is on this sucker right here. Oh, you imagine? You, no, I don't want to know honestly. So. But man, that is. That was a long journey back, and then. Um, you know, out of that, I just basically had to rebuild, and I've built a leadership and coaching and training company, and brings me now all over the world. I get to speak. We got a huge team. We're doing some really cool things, and and just starting to get back into flying. So I'd love to get a Cirrus again. I love having something that, you know, gets me places. There you go. But I'd love to get it. Uh, my wife would like me to have a twin. Yeah. 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 That there would. Even with the parachute on the Cirrus, she's like, I'd still rather have a second engine. So one of these days, I gotta keep watching your videos on what's the I best mean, twins to buy. Yeah, well, I mean, that's easy, it's the Aerostar. You think so? Oh gosh, that is just sex with wings. <laughs> that is just, okay. That's when you fly solo. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. So, Honey, I'm going flying. Yeah, yeah, I just, you just fly because you can't, it's all push rod controls, it mm. feels, it's just so What's dialed. it cost? Well, to buy or to operate? To buy. <laughs> I mean, to buy you 150 to 250 grand for nice ones. Oh, really? Yeah, and they're like homing 540s, you can get them turbo, non-turbo, pressurized, non-pressurized. Now, some of them, it's the world's fastest piston twin. I would get non-pressurized. Yeah, the 600. I mean, just the extra just the extra maintenance for a pressurization system. Well, see, that's where you get it, right? So, the Aerostar... I don't was, mind having a cannula. Was, that's what I used to make. It was built to be a jet, originally. Ted that's Smith, right. the commander. That's right. Yeah, he built it specifically to be a jet. But in order to get the FAA approval and certification, he had to put prop engines on it. And he started with those 540 Lycomings. And then that became the Aerostar and then funding and world changed and other things happened. But it's the world's fastest piston twin airplane. It wow. trues, now the, the there's one they made that was a 700 and counter rotating crazy stuff. It trues at 272 knots. No kidding. A prop, uh, like a piston. That's nuts. And what's its altitude? I I mean, it, it's limited, I Mid think. Mid-20s? It, yeah, it's limited to like 24, 26 or something Turbo like that. Turbocharged? Of course, Probably, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what, though? In the Cirrus, the 25,000, 
Except for some rare exceptions, like with big towering cumulus, I could go anywhere I wanted. Oh yeah. Flight into no icing, that thing. It had Fiki? It was a Fiki plane? The Cirrus would, yeah. Wow. Oh, it was, I can tell you once I got stuck, you know, between two fronts and they kind of converged, I'm like, okay, there's no lightning, you know, moderate turbulence, I'm going to push through it. And it was moderate rhyme. I mean, it was, it was, it would have been uncomfortable in any airplane, but I had Fiki going, went Did it through it. boots on it? or Nope, was just it? all wet wing, wet tail, it was spinning off the prop, so it's also throwing it on the windshield. So in that like situation, windshield alcohol or what? well, no, the the it's throwing the the glycol on the prop to keep the prop oh. from de-icing, but that throws it so it kind of coats the windshield. Interesting. So I had a little bit of ice like in the corners, nothing, no buildup on the wings, no buildup wow. on the tail, because we were looking at the tail, and it was about ten minutes of being in this, and we pushed through it because we we're heading from here up to Jackson, Wyoming. And when we landed, you could even you could hardly even tell that we'd been in icing. Wow. Okay. Yeah, the flight the Fiki in in that Cirrus is real deal. I wouldn't Jeez. I wouldn't knowingly fly into icing, but you can. Well, yeah. I mean, but it's a but it's nice safety. to have in case you get in that situation. Yeah, because I always kind of view Cirrus pilots as pinky up pilots, if you know what I'm saying. Like a little bougie. Up. Yeah, a little, a little, bougie. little pinky. And yeah, I mean parachutes are for quitters, if I'm honest, right? <laughs> Come on! See you, Captain freaking hold on, we're at a two hundred feet and we're trying to light it. We're not we're still good. We can ride this good. thing out. We're riding it in. Yeah, we're not gonna eject. Stall it right above the trees. Yeah, see you're like parachutes are for quitters. You're you're riding it all the way. Well here's the run, one reason I had the series. Because I could true out at two fifteen. See, that's what I'm saying. That's the, there was nothing else I had access to without buying something. Yeah. Because I bought into it with it. Well, I was flying it. Uh, there was a club here that had two for rent. That an SR20 and a 22. and wasn't turbo, turbo, uh, turbocharged. And there's a guy I met there who had his airplane hangar there that owned it with a couple other guys. So I bought into like a fraction of it. Right. And it was the twin turbo. The thing was just... The thing would climb at 1,000 feet per minute all the way up. Jeez. I mean, the thing was just... It was a hot rod. I know. Fun. I hate to admit how nice they are. Mm -hmm. I hate to. One thing I don't like, though, the side stick has a detent right at neutral. And you're sitting there trying to flare, and you keep catching the detent. And I never felt like I could really be smooth in the flare as you're kind of coming in. That's the one that's little nitnoid thing that I have. That's kind of getting a little nitpicky. That's pretty, That's yeah. pinky up. That's, uh, <laughs> that's a little pinky fair. up. Yeah. Those are they're Porsche people. But you know what pinky up pilots are in the Navy? All the F-18 guys. Oh, is that? Okay. And the thing just flies itself. All right. So there's the comments. <laughs> there you started. go. Okay. <laughs> Holy crap. John. That was fun, man. I really appreciate it. And I, man, it's just, it's been too long. It has been. It's been too long. Well, you were one, of, you know what? When I got this back, you were one of the first guys I reached out to. Well, as soon as I got it, what a month, month and a half ago. Yeah, it wasn't long. Because I knew you would appreciate what it meant to me. Well, so. yeah, because I've known you well since you. I mean, you were. A, you met right at. As soon you as got, I was you kinda, were starting to kind of sort of do stuff, but yeah, you weren't you, able to work more than just a couple hours. A we day. met nine or ten years ago. Mm -hmm. You were still part of. We met through EO. I want to say it was two thousand nine or ten. No, no, no. The accident was eleven, so I think we met. Oh yeah, then yeah. I think we probably met two thousand thirteen. So yeah. 10, 10 years ago. That was uh, Tim Brown whenever he yeah. uh, started doing his yeah. speaking tour stuff. Yep, and Something, I just started my podcast. Yeah. Jump in the Parade. Yep, that was his his book that he was doing. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Well, and the, Are you still doing the podcast? Yeah, Eternal Leadership. Okay, here. That was not a good... It's apparently not a good friend. <laughs> and here's the plug. Go check out Eternal Leadership Podcast. One of the best business podcasts there is. And whatever else John Ram just Google John Ramstead and you'll probably see all kinds of crazy stuff yes you'll see and I'd love to have you join the podcast it's all about how to bring your faith into your work but it got written up in both Inc and Entrepreneur Magazine really mm-hmm wow. yeah that's one of the top podcast leaders need to be listening to that's so, awesome yeah on that, that was, note that like, was pretty cool I mean it's it, it's it's kind of opposite really of Jimmy's world you know how we go about stuff because here you have on this side you have the what could possibly go wrong full send 
it, it will kind of build the airplane on the way down. And then you have on this side, like planned leadership, professionalism, you know, that kind of thing. With a good hint of entrepreneurism. With, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's true. You, got, you have the cowboy in there a little bit. Oh, yeah. 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 Cowboy with a parachute. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get out of this airplane? You got to slide your seat back. Oh, it's it's not always. I will say it is nice having a door on both sides. So you only have one door? Yeah, on the Pipers, you gotta crawl over each other. Oh. I cannot make this up. Just got a text from the wife. <sighs> you gotta be kidding. <laughs> this, 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 really? Okay, just made it back. Let's survey the damage. Okay. Doesn't doesn't smell bad in here. Go in the bathroom. Is it in the bathroom? It actually doesn't smell bad. Anymore. It's not. Oh, I see the rug and stuff has moved. So was it coming out from under that toilet? I don't, I don't know. know. Oh. It was that is all wet and it goes under this. Oh, it's so bad. Oh, it's locked. Well, all right. So how was it with the poop water? <laughs> it was so gross. It was scary. I wasn't sure if it was going to do it again. I wasn't sure where it was coming from. I had just started a load of laundry, so I ran back here. And then I realized that it wasn't coming from way back here. It was coming from that bathroom right there. It, I wasn't sure if I was going to do it again or where it was coming from. So I mopped it all up with Silas's towel. Did you tell him? He found out himself. <laughs> uh, we've been trying to do this load of laundry for three days and it's been locked in there and now it's gone crazy. Yep, it's just been doing that and we can't get it to stop. And uh, we also can't get our clothes out and it's filled with water. Um, that is splendid. Hey, good morning. Can I get a uh, two sausage breakfast burritos with half and half? That's where it's at. Oh my god, so good. Hey, BAS headquarters. This looks a lot more organized than the other place. It's the ZR1 with the LS9 supercharged in here. Oh, America. Oh, he's got the, uh, the eyeballs for the, the thing. Hello. Good hey, morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Yeah, I, what I'm digging here is the actual disassembly rather than destruction of it, just a choppy oh. engine and avionics out of it. It becomes a core. It'll live on another 150. Yeah. Somebody, somebody's wing will get it. Hell damaged or I think you know how many times airplanes hit fence post? Yeah, this one. that you know, prop strike hit something, right? Yeah. Um that hit something hard, because this one's not damaged and that one is folded in yeah. half. It's, it's it's actually really common. Like we have more oh, yeah. we have more bit propellers you know. So you mean like buying an old 310 for thirty five thousand dollars and spending Seventy-five thousand dollars, and then at the end of the day, the value of the airplane is fifty thousand dollars. Right. You I know, those people have, have <laughs> mental issues. <laughs> but how, I will say though, like I've said it a thousand times, like this is what keeps all the airplanes no, going. Absolutely, it absolutely. Is. Yeah. Okay. You know, a, a one fifty. A Piper, you know, an odd airplane like a 337, you know, there's, they're flying. Fun fact about these, yeah. they're multi-engine. You cannot get a full multi-engine endorsement with it. Really? Yep. It's a limited because it's a single point of thrust. I, you know, and the whole point of a multi-engine is having that thrust on one wing. So, yeah, come on over. Because you're, every, you know, there's probably a million comments. You could save that. Don't do that. And you're like, well, okay, you know. And then you look at money wise. So you start getting into some of the cracking on the fiberglass here, and then who knows what the time on the engines are? They could be close to time down. And 
one of these engines to rebuild is like three hundred thousand dollars and then the total value of the airplane in a good flying condition might only be five hundred thousand so then you add up two engines at 600 plus the auxiliary stuff and everything else you're into a million bucks for a five hundred thousand dollar airplane yep that's why it's here the throne although you have the drawer right here where it's self oh no it's got a hose it goes is it down to a belly thing somewhere or does it i don't know oh you know what yeah you know what that is <laughs> you pee in that <laughs> that's gross yep that's gross come on in hi Welcome to Jimmy Airways, where uh, we make it most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, like you saw the 150, engine off, avionics out, surfaces removed. Yeah. Once the mechanic team gets done, that will be just a fuselage. Then everything else comes to kind of what you see here, where exhaust, and surfaces, and cowlings, air conditioning, um, rods, and pulleys, and actuators. This is where it's being staged to be cleaned. Oh wow! So I didn't realize you guys cleaned it. Oh yeah. So we take all the things that are here. And then go right in here. Oh yeah! Look at this whole thing. Same <laughs> right here somewhere, but um, some like we have solvent tanks, you know, and you see uh, parts over there where he's cleaning in the solvent tank, and then we can um, we can power coat. So you, you see these have been, um, they're kind of in order based on how they came from the aircraft and how they came through the research process and she's getting ready to, you know, this is all photo booth. So she's getting ready oh, to yeah, take, the pic take pictures and document what it is. And, and on this one, Continental Engines, these have this little thing right here on the exhaust valve and it's called a rotator. So every time it goes down, it has a spring inside there that's coiled that makes that valve rotate around. Every single time wow. it goes in and out, it goes tuk, 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 like that so it doesn't develop hot spots and burn valves. Interesting. And the warehouse is sort of organized by what it is. Mouth, oh yeah, you got shocks, heaters, fuel, yeah. heaters. This side is a lot of exhaust and then these crates are indicators or instruments. Carbon fiber, what? To get this story right, BAS bought White Industries in Missouri. Correct. Yeah, so they were doing this already. So they had all these like dialed in processes and stuff in place. And then uh, through a series of this guy and this guy and this guy, they ended up acquiring all of that stuff out at Missouri. Correct. Uh, and then they're bringing all that stuff here to go through this to then be able to get as many parts as they can to keep as many airplanes as they can still flying so and and we're, we're yeah we're doing that we're bringing airplanes and parts here mm -hmm. by the truckload we're also we've tripled the staff there yeah um, and we're and we're kind of tooling up the team there to do the same thing we get every day somebody calls and says I see this engine on your website but I want to see the log books okay yeah an aero star heck yeah it is well, that's the, yeah, that's, we just disassembled our Aerostar. We just finished it last week. Yep. This is where we'll stage what we bought that's ready to go in the shop. And be. Dude, the Lamborghini of the skies. Good Lord have mercy. Ooh, that's, that's fun. Was massive. It's a lot of air. Well, like you think it'd be a smaller airplane, yeah. it's not. It's deceptive it's when you watch it. Massive. And out here where we are in Greeley, we're surrounded by agriculture. It's, I mean, it's we grow lots of crops and lots of cows out here. So we can stand here and watch the crop dusters fly a lot of times. It's this same airplane, and it's just this little yellow speck flying through the air, Huge. you know. And it, but it is a massive airplane. Well, I mean, you think I'm kidding? Look at that. It did crash. It is! Right here, you can see it. It's a five gallon gas can strapped to the top where the. Ah, <laughs> oh, you can't really see it. 
Anyway, it's, it's right there. That's funny. And now we're going back upside down. That's going to be fun for the editors to figure out. <laughs> right. <laughs> Clint, thanks so much for showing That's us like, around. Meet us in Missouri and giving us ticks and chiggers. <laughs> Appreciate that. Right. Mild heat stroke. <laughs> uh, I mean, check them out. BASPartsales.com. They've saved our can so many times. I mean, textile. I, I, I think I don't have a plane that I don't have a part that I got from you guys on. Right. Check them out, BASPartsales.com. They're not paying me anything for this. This is just cool to get behind the scenes, like view of how used airplane parts and stuff keep other airplanes flying. It's super neat. And you guys clearly have got like a really solid machine going. So, Clint? Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Good to see you again. Uh, now it's time to go get my family in a quasi-broken RV and see if we can't make it to Oregon to go to the museum where we have some other really cool things. So, bye you guys. Thank you so much. See you, Jimmy. You want to see what a million and a half dollars will get you? Do not show the wife this. Uh, heating and cooling or something? Oh, there's more, there's just touch pads everywhere on this thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that is okay, we got legs out. Oh yeah. We got, we got seating. Is Seat. that heaters? What is that? Heat your cup holder? Oh, that's a massage. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's a massaging seat. Oh, that's nice. Oh, we got it. Yes. This has got massaging seats in I it. I turned off. What's that? Oh, yeah, red, purple, whatever, blue and red. I don't think like it blue. Heated or cooled or something? Is it a compartment? <gasps> oh, that's just like for access to yeah. stuff. But it's still on a hinge. How crazy is that? Full on rock and roll style. Whoa. Dude, that's a like house. That's a regular refrigerator. Wow. Who knew you'd get excited about? It rolls out. We got your sink and all your, you know, your stuff. Oh my gosh, that's so heavy. That is, that's actual stone, granite. Good lord, that's heavy. Wait, I think it's the table. Oh. Oh. So back here. Wow. Whoa. A dishwasher. Of course. Of course. Have to have your dishwasher. I mean, okay. we're not animals after all. <laughs> wow. Okay, I think this is the bathroom. The bathroom? What? What kind of a door? Look at the sink. How do you turn the lights on in here? No touchpad. Doot, doot. On, maybe. Hey, oh. What? Dude, that is seriously That's fancy. What I'm saying, like, what? I don't think they have water hooked up or anything. Oh, no, no, like, you can see that. Motion sensor enable. Oh, wait. Is there a camera inside here? Where is it? It's up front. Go up there. <laughs> what? You got a camera in here. You can watch the kids. So you're gonna mat. You got a fireplace in your bedroom, and why wouldn't you? You got this really awesome bed. Let's see how it's comfortable. This is what I think it is. It's the phone charger. What? You set it on there and it charges. I think. It's gonna work. <gasps> no way. It is. It's a wireless charging. My lord, this bathroom, this is ridiculous. No, I can't really. Dude! Well, this is a Whoa. spa! Whoa. Whoa. What? That's a drain. What? <laughs> this is just incredible. <laughs> Washer what is that? Washer and dryer. Washer. Definitely do not show mom this. What? Do not show mom any of this. 
Yeah, that's true. And then we have to get back in our, you know, it, that's ours. Yeah, ours is really nice, but ours. after being in this, it's it like I don't want to go in that, you know, infestation, poor person mobile. <laughs> what the heck? This is a GPS over here for the navigator. What? Oh, you can get it close to the camera. You can see all the. This, this is ridiculous. One point six million dollars, by the way. Power storage tray. No way. Oh yeah! What? There's no way. I can reach it. Ah, uh, there we go. Oh, that's better. That's better. None wow. of this work. Is this? Oh, this one's got it too. Whoa! Here. Dude, look at the outside shower thing over here. What? This is nicer than my bathroom. <laughs> what? It's all stale. I don't know if you can see how thick that door is, but that is a legit piece of metal right there. There is nothing on this RV that's light. I am filled with shame and envy and jealousy now, so let's head back and fix a broken toilet. Sit rep, ready to make our next trip, and uh, here's a list of everything that's broken so far that's still currently broken. Uh, we got the hydraulic jacks, one of them is totally toast, Won't it goes like this. We have a water leak on that side. We have the, uh, the toilet overflowed, but we, we got it fixed. However, it's still really super stinky there. Um, let's see, then shower, no more scorpions, that's good. The toilet, yeah, that's still broken. The water leak on the other side, uh, these hydraulic jacks. I think there's an air leak back here now. Although, on a positive note, the bleeding of the antifreeze has stopped or it's just leaked out so much that it's no longer in there. Uh, that's fine. And ironically, my what could possibly go wrong shirt was stuck in the washing machine. So I just got this shirt because it would be fine. Now we're getting ready to go over the Rocky Mountains, probably the most difficult part of the entire trip. I'd say we're prepared. We're good. Oh, and the generator decided to go out on us again, so. Heard one of the culprits, that hydraulic cylinder blew out. Uh, hydraulic fluid there, hydraulic fluid on that. So that is one of, well, it looks like the other side blew out too. Ooh. Oh yeah, look, that's the other side of it, and it is soaked. Yay! Oh yeah. That blew out big time. Holy moly. All right, here it goes. Let's see if this thing will start up and stay running. Ooh. Oh. Oh, it is not liking that. Nope. Nope. And it just died. Wait. not like that and died again <sighs> super duper okay okay babe I got good news okay the generator won't case won't start or run that's not good news well you ready to go well kids back to the river just thought I'd top the AC off before we get going because it all out again. That's part of your like adding oil, really. Yep. Homeschool on the road. Here we Yay. go. Yay! So Hit the road. Santiago's burrito. Mountain Dew check. Next stop, the Rocky Mountains.
Nope. generator while we were driving and it's self-healing all right I'll take it however long it lasts we are in Palisade Colorado Georgia you got nothing on these peaches these absolutely hands down best peaches I've ever had in my entire life and I'm here during peak peach season. That is the world's best peaches and they're massive. Just huge. Look, same size as their head. <laughs> huge. Georgia, I'm sorry. Second place, a distant, distant second. Made your first leg, yay. Now look at this insane moon. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. Good morning, day, whatever of this trip. Sit rep, generator miraculously still worked all day yesterday, hallelujah, because it was 101 degrees coming across uh, Western Colorado there. But I did notice this. My uh, repair job is not working so well. Yeah, all that is soaking wet, all of it. Just crazy. So we need to make sure I didn't leak out all the antifreeze. We've got two more hard days to go. Hopefully it'll last and not totally blow out. That's what I'm hoping. Got our water hose. And go. I'm waiting for that to turn red or to see something in it. That took a bunch of water. And I have an idea on the generator. I don't know if it's gonna work, but we're gonna try it. I'm hoping it's something as simple as an air filter. Old, new. I mean, it's dirty black, but it doesn't look like totally clogged. I, I don't know if that's it or not, but it needed to be done. So we're doing it on the road. Yes. We'll see if that sounds any better. Oh. I'm gonna say no. Oh, that's bad. Today's journey through Utah, out in the middle of like nowhere, south of Salt Lake City and Provo, in these awesome canyons. Next up, Boise, Idaho. We just learned something. It's locked or it's unlocked right now. And on all these, if you just hit 555, it locks everything. Now, how secure is this? Ready, any, mini, mighty, mo. You just start hitting buttons. And it unlocks. Or any random amount of buttons will unlock that thing. Okay, Noah. No, I it's locked now. Yeah. Now, Noah, you go ahead and start pushing some buttons. That is what? Ah! That is not secure at all. 
<laughs> Keyless entry means anybody can enter without a key, I guess. That's what that means. There you go. Silas. Hey, Silas. Are you ready to do this last drive? Oh. Another day of driving? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's get there. Let's do it. Good morning, Oregon. And it's raining, of course. Last day drive. Let's see if we make it. I have no idea where at in Oregon we are. But we're headed that way. And by some miracle, yesterday the generator stayed running the whole day. Let's see how she how she feels today. Well, there you go. Okay, today's gonna be a good day. We're almost there, generator decided to work today. We got much cooler weather. We got five and a half hours left of driving. Let's go. Oh, but wait, first, a peach. And coffee. Peaches. Peaches. Today's word says, those who work their land will have abundant food, but those who chase fantasies have no sense. I just realized I, I don't have any land. Hey Silas, what are you doing up there? Why? Because it rained and I didn't put out the uh, awning on this slide. So that whenever we bring the slide in, all the water that's sitting on top doesn't pour inside. All right, go ahead. I don't see any water up here though. Really? Hello. Take Hello. the mop thing and just give it one wipe. Oh wow. Okay, go all the way to the front. Today's issue is the rear air. We've been getting a low rear air thing and it's been dropping slowly. So we're gonna keep an eye on that. Hopefully it'll make it all the way and then we can find out why that's doing that. I did it! And today's drive through Oregon is IFR. Low visibility. Oh, we got like a big old load of something. And somewhere in there is the road. Is the road. Yeah. One thing I've noticed is this side of the cabinet's nice and stable as we're driving. And this side not so much. Let's see if we can see it there shaking, rattling and rolling. But yeah. This this whole thing just wiggles and moves. Three thousand three hundred thirty-seven point five miles, sixty-four point eight hours. Oh, silence! We're here. Please. Next stage? Yeah. I bought some airplanes at the Air and Space Museum that are next door. Now we're gonna see which ones will start and fly. No, it's supposed to be pretty. And work on the RV a whole bunch while we're here. No, yours is We made it. <laughs> we did it! Good job, driver. You don't realize? We gotta drive back! <laughs>